I'd like to call the meeting to order is the Hamden Board of Selectmen, uh, July 27th, 2020. Uh, port this meeting is being conducted Zoom as allowed by the emergency mandate by Pre uh, <laughs> President Baker someday. Uh, <laughs> Governor Baker <laughs> on March 2020. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, can can you hear us? The people on Zoom are they unmuted? Are they are we muted? Are they muted? Uh, they're all muted. I will unmute. Well, can they hear us though? Uh, they don't seem to. They don't seem to be reacting. Somebody respond. Somebody wave. Oh, thank you, Robin. We can hear you loud and clear. Uh, First item on the agenda is the meeting minutes for June, excuse me, July 13th, 2020. Got a chance to review those. Is Maura gonna join us by Zoom or come? She said, can I come? And I said, certainly, yes, you have to vote. And she said, okay. I thought that meant she was coming, but I'm looking at the board to see if anybody comes. Are you normally on the lockdown? No. And I haven't lately, no. I'm, I'm, not, seeing, have to check. I'm not seeing uh <clears throat> she's on this call. I say Andrew was just here and you didn't mention that. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? I didn't see any. I'm calling more. See if she's coming. <clears throat> are you joining us at the selectmen's meeting or are you on Zoom or what are you doing? Okay. All right. So we'll see you. No. No, no, you're not. No, that's fine. But we just wanted to be sure you were coming and that we didn't we didn't do a mix up of schedule. Okay. Okay. Okay, hon. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. She is coming. She thought it was 610. She's on her way right now. She thinks she'll be on time. I'm good with the minutes. I just want a bit of clarification. And that the vacation policy is as stated in the minutes. It's not five days. Right. Right. And I know I made a point of sending an email out to the board that if the normal five days were approved for everybody, mm -hmm. the remaining excess time had to be used by December 1st. First, right. Right. And then the five days can be for the whole year. Right, exactly. And, and that so, is what the uh, department people that. and staff were told at the meeting last And year. that's what it says. Right. Isn't that what it says? That's what it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's not in the That's not what it says in the Oh, okay. So it'd be good to play. Yeah. Limited to five days on <coughs> five December first. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's I think five days for the year is okay, and then any X over that, please use it by December first. I got it. Okay. I got it. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, get out of here. You hear? Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Oh, wait, you can. Okay, I'm going to. Yeah. We're waiting for uh, Mara Healy to come to the. Huh? 
and we can maybe do something else. I'm Mary Ellen Glover. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, dear. I'm Bob Markle. And we just talked to Maura on the phone, and she is en route, so okay. it shouldn't be more than five minutes, I guess. <laughs> John, you want to kick anything? Uh, I mean, I think the pilot kind of started pretty quick. No, uh, basically, we're going to want to do the assessors and uh, want to do the Westbrook. Same we're going to do, yeah. uh, okay. do the West. We're going to do, do yeah. yeah. Should, we, should we call Sheila for this and see if she's on the way or not? On the way? I don't know. But, yeah, call her. Up. This is the uh, this is the east. That's the uh, mm -hmm. that that's the pilot thing. Yeah. Uh, so the Westbrook Conservation. This is the restriction. This is the conservation restriction. This is the uh, thing that was voted on in two town meetings That's and right. amended and voted on again and voted by the <laughs> selectmen and voted. <laughs> and then vote again. You are assigning the CR. Okay. One issue. One issue I'm aware of is that uh, we do have a pretty good sized legal bill that can done you know come across because yeah. of all the work on this my understanding is that the trust was going to take care of any expenses with this and they'll get looking into that because okay. this did come through cpa originally right so okay. we want to make sure we okay. think, uh, authorities bill us uh, in excess of four thousand dollars on this so okay. yeah we i talked with uh, flip today about that mm -hmm. we have some sorting out to do right so, uh, now I know that he was concerned if it was last year's, it would have overdrawn this year's, it would put a bit of a dent in the first three weeks. So, uh, but again, Doug will address it when he's back from vacation. Okay. All right. So, do we need a vote on this, Bob? Yes. Okay. Again? <laughs> well, again, the same thing. I'm not. Obviously, we're going to do it no matter what. Right. It just would be nice to know in the future. Be clarity about who's paying the bill. bill. So, yeah. make a motion to accept the conservation restriction okay. on Westbrook. You want to put it? No, we're going to. Somebody's going to pay them. Okay. So All right. Okay. Any second? Second. Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Where is Eva? She's getting her stuff. It's stamped and all that. Okay. You're seeing us in our finest hour, I must say. <laughs> Normally things go so smoothly you just mm -hmm. can't even imagine it, but tonight what? for some reason. We're talking it's about Westbrook. the West Westbrook. Westbrook too. Westbrook too. Uh, I printed this out just today. You don't have to vote this tonight, obviously. Uh, it's in your packet. Oh, it's the pilot thing. Okay. Packet. Mm -hmm. Take some time. <sighs> All right. Want to talk about the pilot while we're waiting for Eva and Mara and? So kind of, uh, I see the pilot here for Ames Road, which is not even, you know, dug it, digging the ground for us. We have 220, which is getting an electrical inspection in the next couple of days. Where's the pilot? Yeah, I don't know. So that's my point. So, I mean, it's all well and good. I'm glad Eastbrook has presented this to us, but I'd like to see the 221. If they're not doing that, I'd like to see the tax schedule for the assessed value. And maybe a chance to uh, ask Norm slash uh, Jane you know, what their thoughts are on that. Okay. Eva is here, so you yeah. I can sign. First, you have to show your ID. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's at the bar. <laughs> no, she can do it. She can. Teacher, she can. Doesn't matter how old you are. Right. When you go when you go through big Y, you have to show your your ID, yeah. even if you're a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> now you know there. that's a personal experience. Notary, 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 notary. <laughs> well, this looks like all just one signature for us and all notary. We signed the blue. We signed the blue. Okay.
You want to sign just the blue? Sign the blue. Yeah. Sorry, I'm on here now. I'm still late. <laughs> hey, Hello, Dad. Uh, the whole family. Andrew was just here. I know. <laughs> I said it's a family affair down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. There you go. Thank you. All right. Uh, just uh, for the pilot. If you take under advisement, take file we're going to look at. Gonna, uh, and basically, it just so for the people who are mm -hmm. there, uh, the ex estimated tax payment would be 14, this is estimated, 14400 per year each year for 20 years. This is anywhere. This is just a small little. I mean, our part of it. Our part of it is small. Part, we right. have the one third, so. Right. It'd be interesting to know what the. Are they doing a pilot in Wilbraham? And what's their number? Because if it's one third, two thirds, I'd like to see that their pilot is basically in the same proportion. Yeah. You know. yeah. This is Ames Road, right? Ames Road. Ames Road. Yeah. Yeah. I, what it sounds like. So perhaps uh, either Bob could ask the assessors to reach out to their counterparts in Wilbraham and maybe get a copy of their proposed pilot. Okay. All right. School committee person. <laughs> welcome, school committee person. Well, welcome, Laura. Hi. Uh, Michelle, you're interested in being on the school committee. Questions? <laughs> Comments? <laughs> well, Question? yeah, I, I would be interested in what, why you decided to, to go for this position and what you think you bring to it, things like that. Um, so I'm very active, so I... I have two children in the, in the district, so I'm, I'm very invested in the vested interest. Um, and it's very important to me when the vacancy came up. I'm, I'm very involved in the school. I'm physically in the building a lot. Volunteer opportunities, I'm on the CPO. And I feel that I also just bring a different perspective. You know, um, other past members may have felt the same way, but I just feel that, you know, having seen what my children are coming home are, seeing different um, issues that are arising in the district, being a member of this community, I feel that I offer a different perspective Ooh. and a valuable perspective. Yeah, because it would be nice to have someone with younger children. I think mm -hmm. the, some of the members mm -hmm. have older children, but oh, some have no children. <laughs> our, our kids are gone, you know, so right. that would be nice. Yeah. You, you know, you get to be the kingmaker here. You know, because they're tie-in, the st oh, right. they're tie-in chairman, they're yeah. tie-in yeah. yeah. vice chairman, and they're tie-in secretary. <laughs> Yeah. Their meeting schedule, everything. It's just so a big tie. So <laughs> she gets to be the, the kingmaker. Rather find gifts on your desk. <laughs> you no, 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 there's no gift policy. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to tell you how to vote. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't vote for the guy who compared Thornton Burgess to Six Flags and mm -hmm. the other school to Disney World. Mm -hmm. Just saying. John? So thank you for stepping up. Uh, it's something that I think this board has been really pushing in the past year is looking for more civic participation. We have a lot of opportunities and we're looking forward to people like yourself to take that opportunity and, and go with it. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to learn from Maura in the next few months. You know, she's been on there. She's been incredibly involved in what's going on. So basically just thank you for throwing your hat in the ring. Is the term just till the next just, just the next election. election. Yep. Okay, and then she would run for the, the remainder of the seat. This right. remainder of the seat, no, and she, then she, she would she run for the remainder of the term if she wanted. But I think she, I think it's it's no, it, I think isn't it's only one more year. Yes, yeah, next year, and I think she. Oh, I think, I think it's think next year is when she would be run for another three year term. Was Heather's expiring next year already? Yeah. Okay, so then we have a three year term. So I will advise that I did have a nice conversation with Michelle about forty five minutes. We had I was kind of open with her about what. She could expect nothing, you know, mm -hmm. very not like non biased, I guess is what I would like to say. <laughs> Just give her some feedback and some background of like what she can kind of expect out of how the meetings run. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I think she'd be an excellent candidate where she's already involved in the school, she understands how the inner workings of it is, mm -hmm. not just in the school committee side. I think she kind of wants to understand that side. Okay. I think she'd be a, a, the, an excellent candidate. Highly mm -hmm. recommend accepting it. So Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Michelle Boudreau to the uh, Position of school committee member to serve from this date until the next town election. Second. 
Any further discussion? No. Uh, the second should come from more. Oh, yeah, second. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know I could do that. That's I yeah, you can't. Yeah, we're well, well, you. No, no, you get you get the vote. You vote. All right. I'm going to vote anyway, darling. Don't worry. Okay. I'm going to vote for the other person. Oh. Can we name later? All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, Good luck. Any luck, you can run right down and get sworn in by Eva. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Stop shopping. Stop. Really. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. Let me ask, let me ask one more question. Your meetings have changed. They are going to be. Um, we have asked collectively as a group if we can move them to Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At five thirty. Tuesday at five thirty. Okay. Because I'm I'm the lead. I told you on the phone yep. that I'm the sure liaison, that and uh, I want to be sure that I go to the right meeting. I've been right trying time. to make sure that the meetings are posted on. Like some of the Facebook groups are being handed in Wolverham because mm -hmm. I think it's only fair that parents are aware of what the schedules mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Um, and like the Zoom. It's the one thing I might ask even of you as Board of Selectmen that when you post your agenda, if you would consider putting your Zoom information on the agenda. I think it's helpful for people to know how to access it. It's the one mm -hmm. thing I do see, I will tell you, is I found it a little difficult to find it until I had to go back to the website. I'm one to follow the agendas and look for agendas. People post them on Facebook, that's where I look for most of them. I have to say, tonight's was pretty good. Right in the news section, it had yeah, it was big. Click, it click was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Boom, it was perfect. Right I yeah. copied it and pasted it, sent it. No, didn't that mean just click and go? Didn't even need copy and paste. Oh, you wanted to send it to those yeah. people? Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. So, Mara, what were you suggesting that we? So, as the school committee does, when we send out, when we post our agendas, well, mm -hmm. as Kate Balski posts them, um, the Zoom information is actually on the agenda. So it gives you the phone call information, the website. Oh, I see. Okay. There's a link. That's the link that you put on the website is even on the agenda. So when folks yeah. in the community mm -hmm. are sharing mm -hmm. it, they have access yeah. to it. Because some people don't realize that the website isn't just Hamden.org, uh, it's HamdenMass.gov. Uh, I can do that. Just a suggestion. One difficulty is that Selectman has asked me to uh, post the Zoom code uh, just a few days before the meeting. Like I typically do it Saturday or Friday night because if you get a lot of email, yep. it gets pushed down and you can lose it easily. So I've been holding off on that. So it goes to the top of the list. Uh, so it goes to the top of the yeah. list if you hold so, off. So, I still don't understand why we don't have the same, same Zoom code for every meeting. I mean, I think that's what other places do. And it's, yeah, and I don't know if it's a, it's a feature of however you're using Zoom. I'm not sure, but I mean, by all means, you could probably reach out to the school district and ask them. No, what we can do, do that. No, it, that it's just a suggestion yeah. to improve yeah. the... I can do that. All yeah. you do is you set up a recurring meeting. Yeah. Right. Um, I haven't, I haven't done that, but I can do that um, yeah. because we do recur on Mondays. Mm -hmm. I held off a little bit because I thought maybe the summer is going to change a little bit, and also we have the Monday holidays. So, but I, I can certainly set up a recurring meeting for a couple of months, in which case you have the same Zoom code. Right? You just see the same comments of people asking. I mean, I have people mm -hmm. who ask me if I know what what the Zoom address mm -hmm. is for the board of selectmen's meeting. Yeah. I'm lucky I remember the school committee ones, never mind. Yeah, we'll one, so. we'll do that. This is more information than you really yeah, want. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it was very good. Hey, hey, hey. The other thing I wanted to ask you is, have you come up with a plan for what we're doing about opening of schools and when that plan is going to be shared? I, I thought it had to be into the governor by the end of next um, week or the end of this week. I know I what's it. publicly posted through the website at the district. I don't know anything different. Um, you know, the Department of Education said they had to post it within August, like mm -hmm. the first week of first August. Week of August. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we have a meeting tomorrow. Um, we'll introduce oh, you Michelle. Have a meeting tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> and so we'll go. Maybe it'll come yeah. up tomorrow as a comment from the superintendent. Yeah, because I think it would be good to keep the school uh, the uh, selectmen invo involved in the oh, yeah. in the process and where we stand on the process. Well, because and I think we the always community should be involved as well. There yeah. should be some feedback from the community. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen a lot of other. Um, I've done a lot of research about what other communities yeah. are doing in the state of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, not limited to even just Massachusetts, but Connecticut, things like that. So now a lot of them are doing parent conferences and Zoom conferences yeah. with parents for input. And I don't think we've done those. We did a survey, I think, a long time ago. They did a survey at the end of the school, well, the of what you would consider the end of the school year, right. a right. couple of weeks ago, a month so, ago, maybe. I mean, but this I is a very important decision. So, so I understand, do you have interviews tonight for Howie's position as well, or? I don't know anything about that. You know, for Howie. Uh, Different candidates for I him. don't have any information on that. I'm not aware of that. Also, tomorrow, the, the lieutenant governor and governor have a weekly uh, Zoom conference. Tomorrow's focus is on reopening schools, mm -hmm. so it's worth checking out. Well, like generally, while I'm at work, 
Yeah. I can listen to a lot of those things. Yeah, you're so I've listened to a lot of his conferences <laughs> um, because I am I do work full time. Yeah. Um, but if I need to take his stuff away, they do. My work is very flexible about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I have been paying attention to a lot of that. Yeah. Um, I do watch a lot of them on repeat because they do post them online. Right. Yeah, so I am following him. Yeah. Because I think it's important that the even at our level, the, I don't know if you guys have sent a letter, you know. Um, to this day, just basically asking them that with all this COVID requirement, that they fully fund whatever requirement they're going to have on the schools. I mean, we already know that there's the potential with the funding for the district um, as a whole for what we'll get for reimbursement. But if they're going to put all these requirements for how we're going to separate kids, um, the PPE, all those things, that's all money that the school has to pay for. But if the, if the government is going to actually request that, we should be asking them to help put that bill. What's your number you're playing with for a possible cut? I've heard 10%. I've seen some regions talking 20% of chapter seven. The um, the last number I recall how we talking about was somewhere between 10 and 20. 10 and 20, yeah. Um, it's been a few weeks. Mm -hmm. A lot of other revisions has come out since then. So um, again, that'll probably come up in tomorrow's meeting. Okay. Um, but I'm more than happy to make sure if you guys want that summary, mm -hmm. we yeah. can provide that. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be kind of pessimistic because the number over the weekend Revenues are revenues are off three billion dollars over yep. estimates. Mm -hmm. So that's going to mean a big. Well, effort. and when I was watching the news tonight, they were talking about um, at the federal level as the Congress is trying to figure out the stimulus. One of the major points that they're trying to get for the stimulus is for education, a bill, but mm -hmm. there's no specific dollar amount for that yet. Mm -hmm. There's a lot and of did, and they in did include colleges in that because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we know the colleges mm -hmm. don't charge enough as it is. <laughs> Okay, so will you take care of um, COI stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Meet tomorrow. I, I say go down. And yeah, let's go see the right 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 sure. right 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 We'll take your percentage. <laughs> Get her the badge and everything. You know. Well, we'll they'll do the, the the district will do probably all that probably. So I'm, in, I'm in ours. Fingerprinted the whole thing. Oh yeah. yeah. I can we take her out now. Thank you. You guys, thank you again. Anything else for me? No, we're all set. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're not. Public health nurse. Public health nurse. So we will start introducing ourselves. I'm Mary Ellen Glover. Hi, We've met John, 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 John. Hi, it's nice to see you all. And you know Jane. Jane. Behind the we've met Jane behind the curtain or glasses. We've the case all right, what's the background here? Well, she, she gave us a resume, a quite extensive resume. And no, um, no, no. Why are oh, we doing this? Oh, why are we doing this? <laughs> I just remember her background. Public, um, public health wait, nurse. It's, she's, she's a public health nurse. It's going to be five to 10 hours a week. Um, it's going to be paid with the COVID money. It's from now until December, we think. But you never know what will happen mm -hmm. with COVID and what direction we will go in after that. Um, uh, we would always like to keep in mind that um, a public health nurse is a good thing for any community to have eventually all the time. So, you know, whether this would lead into that or not, depending on what finances are, mm -hmm. and certainly not with a $3 billion cut, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so it's, um, it's a chance to give better service to the town and be sure that we're all COVID safe is really, what em really where the emphasis will lie. So you would help with the Maven input? Yes, et yes. Okay. That would be what? And, and one of her strengths be. is that, if I can say one of your strengths, is that she's very computer literate and she does mm -hmm. online courses with Purdue. Mm -hmm. So she knows all of that, you know, which, which I would have to become familiar with every with the whole thing. Um, you know, she has that in her back pocket. Right. Would you need an office in here for that? No, I understand it it's a, it's a yeah, I would be doing it remotely. Okay, fine. So tell me what happens with Maven. Someone gets tested positive. As I understand it, and I know we'll be talking more about it, but as I understand it, I would be identifying the individual who uh, was COVID positive and then contacting that individual. And then from there, identify a bit of con, con, uh, con you know, uh, contact, tra tra contact, contact uh, tracing. Find the word, uh, tracing to advise people what they need to do, advise them about quarantine mm -hmm. and so on. And that they would need to be tested. So that that is what and, I and understand. And the state does put you through a through a There's training, a training program, correct? At the very beginning of this, to get everybody up yeah, to speed, looking so at managing the database. Yeah, she have that. And if you look at the resume, she is that rare nurse with a PhD. You're not a doctor. She's a doctor. 
Yes. And we just brought our program on two years ago. Yeah. Very successful. Actually, you're talking about Alms. I set up yeah. the nursing program, the first nursing program, and took it through accreditation. So I'm very familiar with Alms. So let's say December comes and goes, and, and we still have COVID, and they come up with a vaccine. And would you organize uh, clinics? We hadn't so talked that about can, that. So that Jane could give the shots? Yeah. <laughs> we hadn't really talked about that, so I think that that's still to be determined how mm -hmm. that would work. I, mean, I, I, would, I, would think, I would think the whole job is really pretty flexible, okay, because mm -hmm. since it's the first, our first foot in the water mm -hmm. here of what, of what we're going to do, right. and we would not use her to her full potential mm -hmm. as much as we can, you know, on different kinds of things, whether it would be a workshop, right. you know, in the schools on COVID, or whether it would be with parents on COVID, or whether it will be giving shots. I mean, anything is, yeah. to me, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with her education and background and all our certifications. She's certified everywhere in the world, I think. Yeah, we had briefly talked, and I don't think we fully explored all of the possible roles that would be needed, but I think mm -hmm. we spoke primarily about COVID and, enter, and, and the database and identifying individuals who were positive and then doing some follow-up there, some education for individuals who were positive, but we hadn't really explored beyond that. But certainly, but understanding Jane, the Jane health. other 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 things come along, right? Like flu and Lyme, Lyme and all those kinds yeah. of things yeah. that you have to do the same thing with that you do with COVID, yeah. right? So, um, as you know, chain of command. Where does this fall? Where, who do you work for, so to speak, directly? Who do you report to? Here, yeah. I'm really not even sure how. Right. how that works we really didn't get into i mean we had a what an hour meeting uh, mm -hmm. uh, so just talking about mm -hmm. what the role looked like but we really hadn't talked much beyond right. that so i can't answer that question i don't know who i would be directly responsible to i i you know i'd be working closely with jane but beyond that yeah. i don't yeah. know hmm. and what's what? the what's the pay scale uh, 20. i had it right here someplace 27. 27. Uh, and this is paid through COVID funding, the CARES Act, and let's, yeah. what happens when the CARES Act ends? Well, we assume it's going to go through December, yeah. okay, so that we will be, we'll be covered through December. Then we'd have to make a decision. Either we don't need the service anymore because we don't have any funding for it, or we have to get private funding for it, or we cut back, you know, from maybe she's doing 10 hours now and she cuts back to five. So it, we, it's, it's, all, it's all very flexible, really. It is. Mm -hmm. As far as responsibility goes, like so much I would this. think that she would she would work to obviously directly with Jane, mm -hmm. um, but she would be responsible to the town administrator. Well, and, it would and be the, the layout right now because I mean you're going to want to know, hey, who am I reporting to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, as Jane was sense? going on vacation, I think we had a had a quick meeting about mm -hmm. a position, right. and but we really yeah. didn't talk about Does that make those sense details. So yeah, I, 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 I certainly I expected that we would be meeting day. again. Mm -hmm. We will. I think day to day, we work with Jane, uh, and then periodically give me some information just so I can. Well, I think that's important because a, your numbers are going to be sent back in for reimbursement. Bob has really been honchoing that, so it's important that he's really on top of that. If it doesn't work out in a few weeks, bring it back in. We'll, you know, this is new ground for mm -hmm. us. So if it needs some retooling down the road, great. But it's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. and, work and, for Jane. And work for Bob. The, um, the Board of Health is, it meet, is going to meet every, the first uh, Monday of every month. Mm -hmm. So um, we will have time to Hi. commit some among ourselves and say, is sure. everything going well? We mm -hmm. think it's all well. Or we, we have to make this revision or that revision. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And can't uh, that. Yeah. And how many hours a week is it? Five to ten. Five to ten. Okay. So I'm okay. just trying to figure out how, how that would work. Would there be a specific time or would you call her up and say, we've had two people test positive. I, I, I'm not sure. As I said, we need what to talk. I'll be looking at the database. The ISIS desk sends you an email. The what desk? ISIS. The ISIS. I S I S desk sends you a They're going to come up with a better thing no than that. And then refer to a gateway to get into it. But they send you a, an, an email that says there is a um, positive test. Positive. Mm. A positive test. It could be COVID, it could be a tick borne disease. Could be anything at this point. And then you go on and you do all the information for it, all the mm -hmm. including the information. Well, so, what's the information like? The name of the 
birth to hit. I mean, it's, I know it's all it's all HIPAA mm -hmm. protected, but the name of the person, the age, the all the demographics, demographics. all the administration, okay. all the lab work, mm -hmm. all of it. We input everything. Mm -hmm. Then we talk to the person. We give them all the rules and regulations, how, what they can and cannot do, how they have to quarantine, what's required of them on a positive test. And then you ask how many people they've been in contact with. Now you have to call those people, tell them all the rules and regulations and what they're allowed to do and what they can't do on a positive COVID test. Um, and then you have to call them again in like a week. Uh, how are you feeling? What's going on? Are you better? Are you worse? Are you, you know, all cured? No fever, three days. Uh, uh, and you track that person okay. until they're released from Maven. Mm -hmm. And you have to record everything as you do it. Okay. So you can, I can't say to you, it's going to take her, you know, yeah, I know, four hours in one week. It could take her 10 hours yeah. or 12 hours. And it all depends how many cases come. Yeah, no, I was, just, I was just wondering how we would get the 10 to the five or 10 hours. It'd be depend on how many people they had to do and when it would happen. But I mean, she wouldn't be like come in on Monday for five hours and be call up and say, no, I wouldn't right, that's it. And, and especially if she's going to do it at home, she would keep a log. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, a, a I personal know. log. This, yeah. I, just, I called this person at 9 o'clock. It took me an hour to talk now, to them. Now, what, yeah. now, that's that's what happened with COVID. Now, is, would the other diseases that doctors have to report be the same, like yeah. smallpox? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or be measles. Or measles. Tick right. Tick right. Tick disease, TB. You have to go through, record everything, make sure everything is good, do all the inputting, talk to the doctor, make sure that their test came back a true positive, yeah. Yeah. and then you do all that okay. work as well. Yeah, okay. that's what the public health nurse on me then would do. Right. We, it's hard to judge, but if she keeps track of it. Yeah. The governor said that uh, those coming into the state from other states other than New England have to do a two-week quarantine and it's a five hundred dollar fine is there an expectation that local people will enforce this do we have any idea how this yeah. i don't think that's anything i would be doing hi this is laurie how they I, how would they even have, i'm not sure how they could enforce it you have to fill out a travel form you have to fill it out and yes according to jeff we as the board of health are responsible if they don't fill out this form, then it's a $500 fine. Yeah, and it, but Jane, that hasn't, well, I, I've had, I I'm also find out more tomorrow on um, the conference call. I'll I'll do. Do. Sure. I'll do. I don't have an answer for you. Yes. The, the, I know there's a form that each person that travels is supposed to fill out. And, and I'm sure neighbors will call up and be under <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. it happens now. It's, I, this is Lori, I actually um, contacted they, Ron O'Connor. They read him out. <laughs> they read the name of them. Yeah. I just don't know how you find someone who drives up here out of state. And... I don't know. How well, they, they have to know. tell you where they're going. They have to give you a name and an address that, that they're. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, they're leaving, but if they're coming in. And they didn't go. I, I'm sorry, I didn't go. I mean, how would you? It sounds like it would be a bit onerous and not. not can you hear me? It's a nice. Yes, it's all you know. This is Lori. Okay. Okay. All right, motion. We have a motion. So, was Lori the interpreter of the Lori Charm here, basically? Um, no, I was, I was just going to say that I did um, contact DPH today. Um, and ask them to clarify. Um, the, I went through the, the whole entire um, order that the governor put out regarding oh, traveling, yeah, no, travel no. And, the, and the fining and nothing in that document indicates clearly on who's responsible for um, investigating and um, determining who's at in violation and how those fines are actually um, put forth. So, um, the, and I've talked with a, a lot of other towns that have that same question. So that whole order was put out really without any confident clarification on how or who is going to be responsible for doing that. It did specifically in, um, eliminate 
law enforcement. So law enforcement wasn't clearly identified as the um, entity that would do any of that investigation or fining. So it will probably fall back to some degree to the Board of Health. But then again, unless there's some real um, legs to that order, it's going to be very difficult for any local Board of Health to do the follow through investigation and determining how many days a person may have been out of violation with the with the quarantine order. So I think it's going to be a learn as we go type of situation and hopefully it will be not be a very long process to determine how we're going to do that. But at this point, it, there's actually no clarification how that's going to get done. All right. Thank you, Laurie. Yep. All right. We have a motion. I mean, the, the term is kind of a iffy point here, but looking going forward, if you're talking five to 10 hours a week, worse than you've got a rate of 2750, you're looking at well under $1,000 a month, even if we had to fund it. Mm -hmm. If we had to keep funding it out of Board of Health revolving, I'm sure there's more than enough in that. So that would be something you bring back to our board and say, is this a, uh, something we want to keep forward as a resource, even though we're not being reimbursed. I would make a motion that we bring Dr. Rucky on as a uh, public health nurse, subject to reimbursement, any change in the reimbursement rate, this will come back to the board for possible funding. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, my dear. <laughs> Again, right. get, get her the badge. Get her. <laughs> All right. Saying, I'll, we'll talk about yeah, spending some time together. So, <laughs> so you know where you're going. <laughs> How do you smell? Uh, yes, I'll be home tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. 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 Thank nice, you. Nice Thank to you. meet you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Bye you. Bye now. Bye bye. Hi. Hi. Hello, Jean. Hi. Hi. Hey, Jean. Hi. Hi. Want to uh, Where should I sit? Sit six feet away over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Anyway, just over there. Just over there. <laughs> okay. I'll sit back here. I don't know if she's back here. Okay. Kind of a strange time. Oh, golly. Hi, Jean. Don Davenport. Hi, Jean. Don Davenport. Hi, Jean. John Flynn. How are you? Oh, we were some of the players a few years ago. So well, I know that Pam sent you information about um, the country book for the past couple of years. So Jean was one of the first people that came back with the, the salt infiltration that happened about decades ago. Um, and she was seeing quite a bit, of, basically the bubble was passing right under your house mm -hmm. between you and the church. So her numbers were spiking badly. Uh, the town put in a new well and your concern back then was, of course, your piping. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think we spent a lot of time with you on that. We did. How we can did. we take care of the piping? We did an appropriation so you could mm -hmm. go through. Because mm -hmm. even if new water came in, your concern was that the new water might actually cause more of a problem. Exactly. So it was going to take you a little longer to right. remedy the situation. Because right. not only did you need new water, you needed new piping, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, the two abutting properties, and we're talking about the north well here. Yeah. Um, obviously, you had lower numbers because they were outside the, mm -hmm. I want to say a cone, a bit of a cone coming down. So, as I understand it, Jean, you're concerned that you think the numbers are creeping back up again, yeah. you know, after they lowered. I did talk to Tom Kucher, who has been our expert or our resource over the many years uh, through Met Tom. Mm -hmm. And my, he's concerned that we need to also get a, a number from the abutters as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you recall, part of the system is we put a check valve in for the three legs coming off the new well. We want to see if the abutters are seeing the same problem. Okay. Or is there a chance that maybe there's a pipe or something that your contractor missed and could be, you know, okay. basically bring something back in? Because mm -hmm. it's really odd we're seeing this mm -hmm. come back, but mm -hmm. it could be you have such an old house that is there something we're missing? So we're willing to work with you and do some more testing and see if we can localize this. Okay. The other solution that could be brought on, and we talked about a couple of years back, was looking into an RO system. If you remember, we had a conversation mm -hmm. about a reverse osmosis system. Because we now have a larger facility going in place at highway, we can now locate that inside. 
I think it's something I'd like to present to the Board of Health um, and work with Mary Ellen on that and see if we can come up with a potential for that. I have the, a question for you. For the okay. RO system, mm -hmm. reverse osmosis, it's mm -hmm. my understanding that manganese has to be changed. That's my major concern. Mm -hmm. It's overall the, the manganese. It's creeping up. The manganese mm -hmm. is, is big. Um, and that's course, something that can also be addressed by this filtering system as well. Except, except that if I'm correct, and you'll you'll study this too, manganese in its in its soluble form cannot be filtered. It has to be what they call precipitated, which right. means it has to be mm -hmm. changed to a solid, mm -hmm. to a solid before it can be filtered. So that's not a small apparatus to do to do. And that that, that was what held us up before. We had no room for it. Now that we're right. putting this large addition on the highway department, we okay. now have a physical. Area. I'm just, I'm yeah. just, I'm just bringing up the point that I don't think. And remember, that was what our problem was two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. we right. no but the RO it. system is not. No, but it's, it's a whole filtration the, thing. We had a right, quote right. from Connecticut Valley. We looked at pretty hard back then, because your number was again. You were worried about thin thin. Yes. Was that was the thing, at yeah. that point. Yeah. So and this is what. 0.05 for an infant, mm -hmm. and now it's 0.83 or 0.82. So we're six four. A year ago, we were 16 times higher, mm -hmm. and so I don't know what the report of this year is going to tell me, but I know it was tested last mm -hmm. Wednesday, and I know it says this is about five to ten business Something days. like that, yeah. So we don't have that information. So no, but we're, we're certainly, I think, this board is committed to making sure that, you know, system is remedied. Yeah. So. Yeah. I will say the numbers for, I don't know if you all looked at the numbers from the last test in September 2019 yeah. of the South system. And the numbers are quite good over there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it looks like we had a bit of an electrolysis problem with some hardware, but that didn't reflect on the water quality. So the the properties to the south of uh, Main Street, mm -hmm. which is the well next to Academy Hall, are receiving pretty good water. So same thing because we have that check valve thing, we need more data, okay. and we can work with you and work with the abutters and share this with the right, with you. health commission. <laughs> yeah, we want some board, whatever. Um, so, being an older home, yes, but the pipe that goes from the well to the house, um, I think the, the town worked in conjunction with the plumber um, that I had hired to bring it right. I think you brought it right to the house and we took it from there. I remember there was something you were going to, because you didn't want to cut up your driveway. You had to relocate it and come around the side, remember? Exactly. Because of your new, yeah. Exactly and so right basically we brought it to the right wall. Right. We brought yes. it to the wall and yes. basically, but then it's hooking up to the system in the house. And is there a chance something missed? I couldn't say. That's possible. And that's sort of thing. So oh, we can investigate okay. that. Okay. What will help is, like I say, doing the sampling outside the check valve, yeah. because to be honest, you should have it. There's a number here, and if it's coming from here, it should be identical mm -hmm. everywhere. Exactly. Right. Right. But if it's right. not, right. 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 then it's something on this side yeah. of the, right. the road. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And it's to get to the source of the problem, really. Exactly so that it right. solves it. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. So if we can localize it, <laughs> if we can localize it, it'll right. help us we, a lot. It'll be easier to come up with a solution. Right. 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 Okay. Thank you. See, so is, just, is that water, a water heater or? No, that's what we talked about the electrolysis yeah, that happened yeah, on the, yeah. the no, pipe. No, no. That's not, that's this is, no, oh, this is yours? I thought yeah. no, this is the one from uh, no. Mark. No, no. same thing. Being, it's being replaced tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And what the company, what the plumber has said is that he's going to send it back to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And I had put in a really nice water heater, yeah, good yeah. quality. And the company it has a 10 year warranty and it was placed six years ago. But mm -hmm. the company won't honor that warranty if it's a water quality issue. Okay, I will say we saw the same issue happen at the other one and it was not proper grounding. Mm -hmm. It was not ground so that when it was floating, basically the electrolytes and the water was reacting mm -hmm. with the copper. Okay. And it was important that again in systems with a high high number, you make sure you ground the pipes. And we heard this from Diane Bond. So just yeah chat with the guy and say, you know, mm -hmm. run that by him. Okay, so it may not, but then... It might be a combination of two, I'm not, saying. Yeah. Maybe the water exacerbated, but without grounding. But I guess faster. it would be my problem. It would be your problem if, if it was not, not grounded by the water. Right. Right. So how would, I, how would you investigate that? 
I think they could see by the tensile strength of the metal, you know, how it broke down. Was it a fact of the? Yeah, I'm just going to write that down. Tensile yeah. 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 So just um, let me reach out to Tom and see if there's some way, you know, we can get a proper test on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that old water heater, or that one, is going to be being removed tomorrow. But mm -hmm. would you rather it not be sent to the company, the manufacturer, right away if it's something that you want to test? I don't no, want to remove it, and then you can't test it. Well, I mean, go ahead and remove it if it's yeah. like sitting over to the side of it. it you know, oh, no, it but what I'm saying is, she wants to send it back to the company. send it back to the manufacturer. Oh, yeah. definitely do that. Then I'm, I'm all about getting reimbursed by the manufacturer. Yeah, but then she's going to say, how can we, how can we look at it? If it's gone. I send it back. Well, if they're going to reimburse, then I'm good with that question from the get go. Right no, now, we it's don't there. know. No, we don't. You don't know if they're going no, to. She doesn't no, she No, no, no. It depends on if they're going to see if they're going to check materials. Mm -hmm. And if they find that it's a material defect, then they'll honor the warranty. Mm -hmm. If they say it's water quality, then they're not going to. But they have to see it mm -hmm. in order to test it themselves. So if you want to test okay. it, and I think that's reasonable. But how do we get it in both places at the same time? Well, what I'm, not, do we I'm do not an expert, but and maybe somebody online, a water heater is, what are they telling me for how long? Installed, 2200 Yeah, but that's the install price. What's yeah. the actual cost of the I water think heater? it's $1,000. Oh. Let's talk. Okay, let, let's see how quickly we can get a test yeah. done and get back to you on that. But she's okay. having it out tomorrow. I understand that. Let me no. see. You're going in the morning. You're in the morning and call her in the morning. Right. Okay. 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 Eighteen. I've got your number. I can reach out hey, to you, you and Mary Ellen. Okay. So okay. I'm not going to let them take it anywhere. Well, we don't know that. I mean, what time are they coming tomorrow morning? Oh, I don't know. They just said Tuesday. I don't remember. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to <laughs> we need a clock in Tuesday. That's the cable. That's how they do it. The cable guy. Anytime we wait for four. You know what? Maybe he did say, and I didn't hear. It's Terry yeah. Sterling. Maybe I. Maybe he told me, and I didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. So I can call him in the morning. Sure. And ask and tell him that I would like him to wait on it until yeah. you've decided what. If it doesn't hold you up too much, but let me yes. reach. I'll reach yeah. out to Tom. It's okay. Possible. It's leaking, but it's. It's still working. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> okay. All right. All Super. right. Thank, Thank, you you Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be glad you have this over, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's got some history in that house, I recall. That, uh, <laughs> oh, I know. After the handler sold it, uh, somebody yeah. bought it. They were yeah. going to put a funeral home in there. But the biggest problem they had was that they couldn't figure out how to get rid of, so to speak, the fluids into a septic system. Oh. You know, that's why they typically oh, don't, that? oh, that's why it didn't they don't have to, you know, they, yeah. were, they were going to do the preparations in the cellar, like, like right out of like cracking. Right. <laughs> 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 but I mean, considering that that originally was the home of the town doctor, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that sort of would have been the same kind of issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they didn't care as much back then. Yeah. Over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Uh, pilot. If I could touch on the pilot thing, I think I emailed the board that as part of my uh, attending the planning board meeting, yeah, yeah. Um, they did mention that they were interested in doing a pilot on the Borrego project off of Potash. Right. So that's something, again, I did ask uh, the assessors and they haven't received anything yet to review. I'm questioning this review thing. I mean, we're kicking it. Is who's paying for the review on these pilots? Is this something we should be working with the planning board on and making sure that as part of their application fee, they get the applicant to pay the legal fees? We're doing the pilot. Basically reviewing the pilot. I mean, I don't know that it's been large in the past, but I got worried when I saw this West Con uh, yeah. West Con or Westbrook 2 bill Westbrook two. that all of a sudden these can, can sneak right up on us. Yeah, I would, I mean, would agree that that's appropriate for them to pay. That's part of the right. process I mean, of getting the thing in order. Well, when so, you do subdivisions, yeah. it's yeah. almost the yeah. applicant exactly. that pays that. So something like this, that, yeah. I mean, if we had a lawyer that's going to say, it'll take me an hour, look it over. Okay, that's fine. That's the cost of doing business. Yeah. But if it's a week and a half or we've seen some drag mm -hmm. on a bit. But whatever it is, it's the appropriate we thing. Put it in there. The, we the should person put it coming in for the, the project should pay exactly for, the, right. for the fees. So, okay. so the so planning board, the who... Who will well, they, that? Uh, the build, that building, the building. First off, the permit's going to come from the planning board. Right, so I right, think it's right. part of their application process. That should be this, noted in there. Yeah. Right. So. And you're the liaison to them, so you yeah. can relay that message. Okay. <laughs> um, did you also? I had the message about uh, they wanted to reach out to Rose.
for the question? Yes. 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 And, and that I time? agree to that. Well, and I uh, sent a copy to Rhodes okay. saying that please uh, don't mm -hmm. expect a call. Super. All right, Selectman's Policy and Procedure Manuals. We're going to get rid of this pretty soon. We could we'll spell it with an A, but we're <laughs> um, the, um, the only other thing, I, I have it all together, sort of. I need, John, if I, you can have your back your book, then I will put the new, when you have it. If you don't have it now, fine. Good for you. Okay, and I'll have a, I promise I'll have them to you for next week. Mm -hmm. um, but the only other thing in it that I wanted to be sure you, you noticed when you were going through it, was that we have a yearly audit in it, or I don't know if you call it an audit, but a updating, mm -hmm. a yearly updating. It it's, comes under the um, town administrator's responsibility, but it's the administrative assistant that collects the books from us. It says June 1st and returns them to us at the end of June mm -hmm. and makes the corrections. So I want to be sure you knew that that was, gonna, that was in there and that okay. we agreed to that, or if we don't want to, we change it. Mm -hmm. And that I'm going to put a, a, one more section in the back of the book with, um, the new policies, the policies that are deleted that we will keep in the book so that you'll know the history of it. Ask her to, and I will give her some guidelines as to what to do, how to make the notation at the end of each when she changes them. And also um, that she has looked at them on this date with her signature and the date that it was reviewed so that we, we can keep that for five or 10 or 20 or 50 years and we will okay. know who, who checked it. So that right. takes care of that. Uh, Ames Road Pilot, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to, okay. Uh, 220 Mill Road lease agreement. And that's what I spoke about earlier that uh, they're going for an electrical inspection this week. And this has seemed like this, this lease slash pilot has been dragging on a bit. Heck, we're talking about turning it on and they still don't have a good sense of what the town's right. getting out of it here. So I'd like to, if Bob could put light a fire under it okay. and get an answer. We shouldn't be giving a permit if we don't we'll, know we'll, where we'll we're getting. Get it, right. They're doing it already, huh? They're, they're that right close. Up. Yeah. They're close. Yeah. All right. Light fire. Light fire. Light fire. Safely though. Yeah. Highway award bids for Pondview Drive, mm -hmm. Maple Grove Drive, Springhouse Road, and Perennial Lane. Uh, Mark is. We have uh, recommendations Mark is on from this Mark. Call if you have any questions, but uh, this is relatively. I thought Mark's uh, recap was yeah. pretty good. I, I agreed with his uh, recommendation because of the history, et cetera, for uh, the contractor doing work on two projects near each other. It made sense to me. So I would uh, move that the board vote to endorse the highway superintendent's recommendations for bid awards. Second. Oh. So you need to know Oh, only if he has something to say. Okay. <laughs> Shake his head. Mark, you good with that? We're okay, Mark? Yeah, uh, yes, I am. I just wanted to make myself available in case there was any questions on, well, especially the uh, the B project for Perennial Lane. I, I tried to supply as much uh, information as I could, um, could find. And um, yeah, if there was any questions or anything, I'm... Uh, Oh, available. biggest question, Mark, would be these came underneath these came under your budget you gave us in the construction right. schedule this year, right? Well, they did not. Um, on on the milling, uh, not the milling, on the reclaiming prices uh, jumped up quite a bit uh, from the quote I used um, on my estimates. Uh, what I may end up having to do is. I have to I have to just run the numbers, but what I may have to do is put off Kelly Lane until the fall. Hmm. Uh, which one to the fall? Kelly. Kelly Lane. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, I mean, the worst part about Kelly Lane, I mean, that, that slope at the beginning, yeah. you know, that's the thing. The, bo the bottom part's in pretty good shape. But. Yeah, that was going to be a, a, a mill in a pave. Um, but like I said, those, those reclaim numbers, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened uh, and how they ended up to be a little bit higher than what I estimated, but um, I can, I'm going to find out. But it seemed to be across the board. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just one company or anything. Hmm. Okay. So that's good. As long as you do it within your budget, right? Well, I mean, it puts off one project. It puts off the actually, project, but if know. that's what has to happen, that's what has to happen. And of course, we still have the option that we did take money from the highway paving Right. Line, we still have the option to add that back in, in the fall. So, depending on how free cash comes along. 
So my motion is still there to endorse the highway superintendent's uh, recommendation for award. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Selectman liaison reports, housing authority appointment. Well, also there's another uh, short list that was not included in the first round. Oh. If you choose to. Oh, this is some uh, yes, go see. forward uh, cemetery, library, historical commission, mm -hmm. COA, ZBA, and building. Actually, I thought we did ZBA. I yeah, I think I, I got ZBA. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I had mentioned Housing Authority that, you know, I'd like Housing mm -hmm. Authority and COA. I was on the COA board yeah. for a short time as well. Um, and some of the other ones you mentioned? Uh, uh, cemetery, library, historical commission, COA and building. Uh, John had asked. John, yeah. John had asked for a um sure. no, no, I'm not talking about that. I mean, John, John had asked for a um um description of what the liaison's responsibilities were. Did we get that? I didn't didn't you ask for that? No. Didn't you email it or no. yeah, I thought it was you. No. Well then maybe I was just thinking about it. But what what, what is what is the responsibility of the liaison? Is the liaison does the liaison go to all their meetings? Basically that's they what just, in the past that's what it's been. They go to the meetings or they stay in contact with the chair and provide a report back to the board. Hey, this is what's happening at the COA. This is what's happening at historical. Um, this is something the board should be aware of that they're discussing at their meetings. Yeah. Okay, so you should go. You should, so they, we should attend their meetings, and then should we have a or reporting? Or, or, with them. Or, and yeah. should we have a kind of a reporting system, like yeah. these four will report on the first week of the month, the second week of the month, or something, I think or just as it, needed, it, it or the connection. It's uh, with the board or whatever yeah. to the board of selectmen. And then I know on some uh, communities there is a regular part of the agenda right, that's what I thought. where they ask for reports from selectmen mm -hmm. on activities like liaison or if they go to a meeting or something. Right. Sure. Right. So there's not a called out specifically, it's just if there are any, yeah. you would say, well, at this meeting and then I was at mm -hmm. okay. so something important or something. I mean, you wouldn't go into the nitty gritty yeah. of So you would, you would put on the each agenda reports of the selectmen. If we have them, we have them. If, if we, we don't, don't, if we don't, don't have anything around it. Okay, so library is either John or me. Do, do you want to join me? Do you have the library. Me, did you say? Okay, and then um, ZBA is me. You? Yeah. John. Donald. Yeah. And then um, Council on Aging is John. John. And historical is John. Mm -hmm. And cemetery is me. Right. Yeah, I, get, I get historical and aging. I'm feeling something five, here six. right now. Yeah, yeah, six you, you, you haven't and advanced the cemetery yet. Library's me. <laughs> you, just you. Just me. Okay. Okay. And like I said, if, building, you, find, if you find more, Bob, you know, just throw them out there. Well, and I, we said building was you, right? Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. Okay. What's that? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, to Westbrook 2, acceptance of conservation restriction. We did that. Town discussion of the town administrator position. Mm. Well, I oh. brought that up again. I mean, yep. I thought that Bob did a pretty good job bringing those two firms in before. Did the board want to, you know, redo that again uh, pretty soon? Bob, you will be at some point brought back down to the 20 hours a week, you know, when the. Uh, <laughs> The governor's exemption expires, if you will. Um, you would also talk about that there's the best time of year to go out in the hunt, if you will. Yes. And that is, refresh us again when that is. Uh, it's late winter into the spring. Mm -hmm. That's the time when incumbent administrators will say, I'm retiring mm -hmm. or I'm leaving mm -hmm. uh, or get fired mm -hmm. or uh, uh, other changes. Mm -hmm. And so, that's when the pool would be largest. Uh, you have the largest choice. I mean, not that you don't get uh, ads and so forth during the year. If you looked on the MMA website, which everybody does, uh, I think there might be one town advertising now, maybe two. Mm -hmm. uh, but you'll see in February and March, it'll go up to maybe four or five. And no, I think that's that's the ideal time. Not that you can't get someone 
and connect with somebody mm -hmm. uh, at other times, uh, it's the luck of the draw. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the pool gets bigger in the spring. We just saw a Hadley yeah. change, you know, and they had yeah. uh, several candidates. And yeah. Even uh, people are signing contracts for July 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could, could you could you share with us um, what you liked about the job, what you found difficult, and um, what you see as your future in, in a town administrative position? You want me to yeah, say it now or you want me to write it down? Do you see Would any you potential for yourself as a town administrator? No, I mean, do you, do you, no, do you, if you envision, I mean, I like this job, I want to stay here forever, or I, as, as quick as I can get out of here, I'm, I'm gone? Or I, I uh, never say that I'm going to work. I say I'm going to the office. Uh -huh. because, um, some, in some ways it's work, but this is the kind of stuff that I like to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to continue to do it as long as I can and be effective. Uh, I like it here. Uh, it's your decision. If you decide that you're going to go with a full-time person or whatever, I'm fine with that. I'll, uh, you know, there, there's You'll move plenty on. of opportunities. <laughs> uh, and so that's, that's the way I view the world. I'm, I, uh, I'm going to continue doing this indefinitely and, uh, I'm happy to stay here, but uh, the board has to assert the, the you know, the uh, res the uh, interests of the town, however you define them, and I'm willing to uh, certainly abide by that and, and cooperate with you in, in and recruiting. If that's, if that's and when did you first come on? It would Just be refresh. September of uh, September of 19. Yes. So one thing is that the town did vote to get a full-time yeah. administrator, and I think Bob's done an excellent job of holding down the fort. But he is restricted from taking on that role. But now he's going to streamline the process. He's brought some structure to it. We have this opportunity, perhaps working with Bob, to do something. We also know that the company that had the opportunity and the price was just under ten thousand, I believe. Yes. We have the money in the budget for it because we budgeted the full salary for the town administrator. There's quite a bit of unused money, if you will, on a weekly basis. The extra money that's used for you is yes. reimbursable. Yes. So by the time we get into this, we would have accumulated well over $10,000 mm -hmm. in that line item, which could be transferred by an appropriation mm -hmm. line item to line item at the fall town meeting mm -hmm. if the board so decides to go this way. So in terms of hiring a firm, and I don't know if we've made a decision which firm we like the best, but they're both, they're they're both, both good. Yeah. We could have a motion at the fall town meeting to uh, shift X number of dollars from the town administrator's salary to town administrator's search or whichever. Mm -hmm. Really, with no new appropriation at that point. No, this is this is what I learned. I'm sorry. Yeah, you'd have to move money from salary to down to expenses because exactly. you'd be doing a contract. Right. right. You can't pay that. So right. But again, not no appropriation. We've already. No, had no, no. Money. You would not need. This, this is what I learned. When we started off, I thought, you know, maybe a half-time person or part-time person could do it. And even when you weren't getting the extra hours COVID, I know you were putting more than 20 hours in a week because mm -hmm. we'd get emails on the weekend. We'd, you know, you, you know, you're supposed to work Monday through Wednesday and Thursday mm -hmm. you'd be here and we'd be doing the agenda and things like that. So you're putting in far more hours than you were billing us at the time. Mm -hmm. And from that, I learned that the job is probably more than a part-time person on a full basis, particularly if we're getting into the human resources aspects, mm -hmm. which we really need to do. And there's just so many things going on in the mm -hmm. towns now that uh, I, I, I think that, well, you've done a fabulous job. I'd love you to stay. It's the, the hours thing. And I think now that- you can I work think more hours by the state, can't you know? Only, 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 only during the emergency. Only during the emergency. Only during the emergency. So right. Okay. So, so it's 30 a bit 30. of a fairness thing, and we talked about this with yeah. other employees. Why should he be working for nothing? And unfortunately, he does, and it's not fair to Bob. Right. You know? I'm not. Well, I. am not complaining. I, I said. <laughs> I think I, I think every while, professional works while, beyond the hours. You, you can accomplish something mm. that is a benefit to the community where you're working, and that's the satisfaction. Mm. Not easy, it doesn't happen all the time. Once in a while you get a win. Right? Yeah, yeah. I would be I would be more inclined to to be saying, how do we what are the responsibilities that you have? Which are the ones that you can't get to? And who can we who can we share those responsibilities with? Because I think that if we have we have two we have an a, 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 
whatever, whatever Pam's title is, administrative assistant, and we have an administrator. Those are two people. And can that job be done by those two positions? Not those people perhaps or whatever, but do we need those two full-time people to do this job? And I think that that would be an analysis that would be helpful. Um, and I also think that um, at the very least, um, I mean, I have no problem waiting until December because that's your anniversary date, but, and so that's fine by me. Um, I think that at the very least we should eliminate the interim because I think interim is, means, um, is not as, what's the word I want to use? It's not as, it's not as. I don't see how you can not make an interim <laughs> since he's not full time. Right. Oh, you have to be part time, you're part time, you're part time, well, you're we, interim? We, well, then we would have, if we made him, if we made him, if we made him. We have a full time town administrator. Right. Because, because, because the board, because the uh, town meeting elects voted a full-time full right. town, right. Right. so we can't change that? That's a bylaw. I mean, you go to it's a bylaw. Meeting. It's not a bylaw, is it? I am not. I don't, I wouldn't think it was a bylaw, but it, it may be, it may be a, a warrant article passed. Warrant article, yeah. yeah. When, Mary, when, when Mary McNally came in, it was, it was well, somehow. Yeah. I mean, that's why we, we established a position at a full-time town minister. Well, realistically, I think it's a 30-hour job. I think that's what I think, too. Working smoothly and get above the learning curve and, mm -hmm. and get organized. And remembering you're adding additional functions for HR, as well as uh, I find that these grants things now are, are requiring administrative work. Right. I mean, grants are a nuisance now. You like the money, but there's a lot of paperwork involved mm -hmm. and reports and all that stuff. I think you can get it down to 25, but um, it's 25 to 30, depending upon. It's not 40. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's 40. No. Well, and, and I, I don't even think 35. I think you're looking to 25 to 30. And that's where well, we're I think I put it on there because I think it's something the board should right. talk about. Okay. You know, it's not fair to Dr. Markle to be a, not to compensate a professional for his work. Fortunately, right now, thanks to the care, he that. is being well. Right. Yeah, but 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 the other the other thing I would point out is that um, a professional always works more than the hours that are required. Mm -hmm. Everybody, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, if I only got paid for the hours I worked, I would be a millionaire. I'm not accustomed so, to working yeah. on an hourly way. I'm just accustomed to right. get the job done. And exactly. Not mm -hmm. worry about hours. Exactly. Right. hours. Exactly. And I have to say that's one of the things we respect about you. Yeah. But again, it's an item of fairness. Too. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, unless you want to make the company car make up the difference. Or... <laughs> He's got one of those fancy cars already. So we'll keep so this we'll on keep the agenda. On the right. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, ambulance contract, service contract issues, oversight committee. The contract provides for an oversight committee. Yes. Need four times a year. We, uh, there's been a few folks who have communicated as all these messages. They'd like to be on the committee. Um, I certainly think that uh, you know what we need are. Uh, it would be good to have uh, a police chief, town administrator, and maybe even Dr. Beltran if he's willing to do it, mm -hmm. and then maybe a doctor, a few others, yeah, mm -hmm. someone from the advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Well, well, let, 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 let's let look at what they, what they, what, what they would do, what they do. I mean, isn't the, isn't the role of the oversight committee to say, okay, in the last four months, we had a hundred, a hundred calls, you on five of them, it took you 20 minutes to get there. What's the story with that? Why did that happen? And, uh, yeah, three of them you didn't, never showed up at all. We had a call mutual aid. So I have a suggestion. If we can move this to next week, I'm having that meeting on Wednesday to sort out those responsibilities. Okay. okay. I mean, kind of like the license commission, basically, Don. You go yeah. back and you do review of yeah. all those activities. I, th I think, though, that, that... And if there's any citizen complaints, they would hear those sure. citizen complaints. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that the oversight committee should be made up of people with expertise yes. in the areas. I do, And too. not not just citizens that you know that we say oh you don't have anything to do how about if you be on this committee so i think they should be you know we should have somebody with a medical background we should have somebody with a um with a um 
dispatch be on it. background huh. administration, administration. Oh, dispatch, dispatch. Phone, dispatch. Knows about okay. dispatch so we should we should have you know like five people maybe or whatever but i think they should be handpicked and should be with ex specific expertise that can really know what supervision is rather than just go to a meeting and it's only four meetings so it's not well, I think I go back to what uh, Don said earlier. Let's define what the committee's yeah. task is first, and then you put the people in for the right task. I think it. I yeah. think it. It says in the in the contract, contract exactly what it's responsible to do it for doing. Okay, so next week. Yeah. Which I think was I think was which was different than the people. Seriously. Yeah, next one. <laughs> which I think was different than the um, what the people that put in the request to be on the committee thought that it, thought it was a different mm -hmm. committee than it really is. <laughs> So you're meeting Wednesday, Wednesday with, with all the parties. Okay. We're that means sort through. We're going to go through the contract and say who's going to do this, who's going to report to who. Okay, because the re the reason I wanted to do that was there was some of the things that says the police chief, but he's not involved in that That's anymore. Right. So if we are, are we going to give it to the fire chief, and then how are we going to do that? And and we also have to work out the uh, those are the main. Points. And they also, uh, you, they, they ask you for a designee. Yes. So I don't know who that'll be, you or the fire chief or, you know. I have a, a signed contract signed by them and signed by the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. And I thought what we'll do since uh, their district manager will be there, as we go through, we're gonna cross out the police chief, I'll write in fire chief and we'll initial. Okay, uh, all right. Fix the contract. All right. All right. And then we'll put this on the agenda for next week. And I'll yeah. Report to you. Okay. okay and so, for, so for next week, then we will um, we'll put it on the agenda, but we will have we will have people's names so that we don't have to say, well, again, who are we going to take? We're not going to have or, people's names. We're going to have titles, positions. Or, yeah, but okay. So we want a we want a nurse, or we want a doctor, or we want a whatever they say. Oh, you're what talking you about the, uh, the, committee? the committee? Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's going to be on the agenda, how do we bring it to closure at that meeting? If we don't have names or people. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Sure. I thought uh, that's what uh, <laughs> Bob was going to get back to us with a report well, after the yeah. meeting. And the, the, the you know, so need. asked about the meeting. What 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 they must have these oversight committees in other towns. Right. What what. Sure. Or is, it, is the makeup the generally of them? Yeah. Well, what it, what it says in the contract is the committee will con can consist of appropriate members from the town and shall re review and improve protocols and oversee an annual review of costs and evaluations of quality of service. Okay. The committee would also address residents' concerns and questions. Okay. That's thing we've got their job description right, right here. Right. Yeah, but so we're, that's de it. we're defining what appropriate is. And that's right. what Bob is going to come back to. Like they're your concern there. Like appropriate isn't just somebody who said, hey, put me on the committee. It's appropriate for the task at hand. Right. So we'll with that definition from Okay. So we're gonna have next week gonna we're gonna keep town administrator on for discussion as we go along. I'm gonna have the amb the ambulance oversight thing okay. again. Uh, I did speak with him. Uh, town town accountant year and report. Yeah. Um, don't get me started. I, I, I talked with him. <laughs> I think for the benefit of the taxpayers, uh, the good news is that the town finished in the black. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no significant financial problems or issues in closing out fiscal 2020. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, we are waiting to hear from the Department of Revenue as to how much free cash he has submitted mm -hmm. uh, proposed free cash. Uh, he's waiting to hear uh, from the Springfield office uh, whether or not they will, they will approve that amount. It's in the range of 400. Um, and as far as fiscal 21, uh, he said that he is going to start working on the tax rate, the proposed tax rate for fiscal mm -hmm. 21. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the message is from the from the accountant that uh, the town finances are sound, uh, and that we go into the new year with some uncertainties. Mm -hmm. But even if the reduction in state revenues causes uh, major reductions mm -hmm. in local aid and in Chapter 70 school aid, uh, the town is in a position to rebound from that because we are not very dependent upon mm -hmm. local aid uh, and school aid is another matter, but they do have some funds that they can reach for. Uh, 
uh, should the, the cuts be made. And my guess is that it's, it's hard to see that the continuing decline in revenues at the state level is not going to bring about some cuts in school aid. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly in maybe some 9C cuts in local aid for, uh, for cities and towns too. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, the town is stable and sound and uh, out of good financial situation. All right. Uh, dispatch. Anything else? Dispatch update. I uh, been, you asked me to do make some phone calls, do some checking, and I've done that. Uh, you had asked me to call surrounding communities and ask um, how it's going. Uh, as you know, Munson um, affiliated with uh, Westcom. Um, I talked to uh, Evan Broussard today. He said it's going well, no problems. Uh, they're pleased. I also called East Longmeadow and Longmeadow. The administrator in both towns is on vacation, so I'll hear back from them. <laughs> hear back from them at uh, at some point, but not this week. Um, I spoke with the E911 office. Mm -hmm. uh, the proposal that was made. For the current year um, is probably not available. They were going to announce grants by July 1. They're delayed. Mm -hmm. They're hoping to announce the grants for this year by mid <laughs> August. And uh, the administrator there said it's probably too late. Even if you vote tonight to do something, it's probably too late to get into the the grant for this year. However, if you decide to consolidate with Wilbraham or Westcom uh, in the future, in the near future, he said there are support grants that you could ask for and probably uh, be successful. Police chief also believes the same. Um, that would pay the fee from what would we say November until the new fiscal year, and then in fiscal 22, the three-year deal, the three-year deal obtains, plus the fourth and fifth years with partial uh, subsidy for the fee. Uh, so the deal that was discussed earlier is available. It's more than likely too late for this year. All right. Although, again, a decision to go in in October, November, December, whatever, uh, can also be cushioned with a support grant, which is available. And it's a different type, type of grant than the one that they were talking about. We did have a uh, Zoom conference with the town of Wilbraham uh, last Wednesday. Um, I thought it was uh, a, a good session. Wilbraham is open. Uh, to a consolidation with Hamden. Um, there's an issue with uh, funding. And they were told that they will not get the same kind of funding that Hamden is getting because they're already established and, and, and operated. They will get additional funding, though. They will, get, funding. they will get the same funding that Westcom has offered. They would get 100% right. the three years, right. yeah. then the fourth year. They won't the get that. No. They would, no, they would get, get that. No, they would get the same funding. And Dr. Tony Gentile this afternoon was oh, yeah. leading the discussion. Oh. He said they would qualify the same 100%, 100%, 100%. Was it 75, then 50? Yeah. 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 Well, what happened is Hamden would, lose, Hamden would lose your E911 money, which is 25000 right. right. That would come off because that makes up yeah. part of their money. But we get into what are our savings on the other part of really 25 that we save in whatever. So it really gets down to that discussion. And I think about yeah. led the discussion on that. Same thing Wolverham question had, yeah. like what's in it for them? What's in it for us? Well, they do get their dispatch money then completely funded for the first three years. That is not how he presented it at the meeting that I recall. And I took notes of everything that they said. And as I recall, what they said was that they would not get that money and is, is that is that not your recollection too? Well, and that and that um, it would be um, 
Let me see what I can take, give you some quotes. Uh, both, both Nick Rawl and, and um, Russell said the same thing. They both said the same thing. And I got it done twice, which I highlighted. <laughs> well, um, I did call the state 911 office and I asked them if they would, if they're gonna do that. And they said, Mr. Ken Holcott said no. That they won't do 100, 175 seconds. But he said they will do additional PSAP money mm -hmm. for Wilbraham. So we'll, there's something in for Wilbraham but at least he said, now, you know, we're getting conflicting. But wasn't opinions. Wilbraham saying that um, we would have to give them money? Yes. We would pay them, that's what he said. That's because Nick was told, Nick was told that there were, they weren't going to get the same deal. And then, I guess, at this meeting that they had with their selectmen a couple months ago, police chief spoke up and said, what's in it for us? Mm -hmm. And that was the question mm -hmm. that they posed back to us. Uh, at this session on Wednesday, they're still asking that question. I followed up with a phone call to the town administrator and I said, what are you talking about for a payment? He said, we want half your savings. I said, well, I don't think I can get that done. He said, uh, how about 75, 25? That's where we left. So I, there's a lot of confusion surrounding here. Mm -hmm. I also asked the chief of police because he knows the secretary. And <laughs> <knows everything>. <laughs> you know, sits on top of all this bureaucracy. <laughs> and he's going to call her, and he did call her actually. And he said that uh, that's where the final message will come from. Um, I guess he's been friendly with the secretary for quite some time. So that's what she will make the final decision. And, and so I have to say. I'm confused too. Um, mm -hmm. it, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And the other thing is, I was listening to the whole thing. I thought it was a very good meeting. I, yeah. I was very open and, and yeah. you know, congenial, and, and everybody and was, open, was yeah. frank and yeah. whatever. But I think anything you get, you got to get in writing because yeah. this person talks to this person, Gentile mm -hmm. talks to this person, and then Bro talks to this person. And yeah. then we are listening to, you know, yeah. but, but consistently, they wrote, uh, Gentile said, um, there is no financial advantage to Wilbraham and there has to be one to be palatable. That's what he said. And Russell said, in the end, dispatch would be run by Wilbraham and him will be assessed for it. That, that was a quote from him. So, you know, I mean, I just think that it's, you gotta get, you gotta get it in writing. Well, <laughs> you gotta get it in writing. If we, were, if we were to move forward with this, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can continue talking and uh, talking with Wilbraham, talking with, uh, Westcom to see what the best arrangement could be mm -hmm. to decide to do this. Um, it, uh, what I can say is there's no time pressure. You can make your decision. Except for the make, town meeting. Going to make Except a that we said decision. we would make the decision to consolidate. You can make that decision, excuse me, um, at any point here. Mm -hmm. And the Commonwealth, I think, will. He made it clear that he would he would provide a so-called support grant to cover to pay for all the stuff to move over to wherever we wherever that would go. Yeah. 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 So we can do it until the end of the fiscal year. And then when fiscal twenty two starts, <coughs> that's, when, now, that's when the the, the one hundred percent. Yeah. How do we know that that will happen in fiscal twenty two? We don't. Right. So it has to it has to be passed. It, you know, they yeah. have to have the money there, and they have to pass it. Well, they, I do know that they, they still have the they still they have, have the money from, pot of money. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, from right. the cell phone surcharge, mm -hmm. and so even if the state is flat on its back financially, <laughs> they have their money because as we continue right. to use cell. Phones. So they're they're running it this year. Yeah. That the the special program they're running this year, but we just have run out of time, or it would be too close to maybe con be considered. Yeah, and they then they'll be running it for next year. They right? should have announced okay. the grants. July 1. But because of COVID, they are running late. And they expect to announce them in mid August. But if the town of Hamden were to decide tonight to make the change, he didn't think that enough could get done so that they would uh, put Hamden uh, among the grantees in mid, mid uh, August of this year. So uh, nothing's going to happen in fiscal 21. Unless and this guy was who? Was he the he is the administrator of the program. Okay. His name is Paul, Ken Polcott. Okay. Uh, and uh, um, 
But his decisions, again, are controlled mm -hmm. by his boss, who's the secretary. Right. And when I talked to Chief Farnsworth, that's what he was saying. He said, we need to be in touch with the secretary as well. He said, I know the secretary. I'll make a call and we'll talk about it. I think tomorrow we're going to talk okay. about whatever the secretary says. So this is fairly confusing as to what, Very confusing. what's in it for the town of Wilbraham. Right, but I want to be clear that, again, I had a conversation, and my understanding was that they would get, they would qualify for the reimbursement, the same reimbursement that West County would. The three, three years, the three two years, three years, two years, two years right. three. And I do see that uh, Tony is on our meeting, perhaps he could speak to that. Who's Tony? Who's Tony? Tony who's Tony? Okay. <laughs> okay, here he is. Tony? Tony? He's got us on mute or something. He's muted. I'm not muting him. I have to ask him to unmute. Right. I don't think said, Mr. Gentile, can you unmute yourself? There he goes. Okay. Sorry about that. I had a, a little problem. I had actually leave the other meeting to come into this one. So there's some confusion. Did you say that uh, Warbraham would qualify for the same reimbursement that Westcon did in some way? The same uh, development grant? Yes. Um, when two communities uh, merge together or regionalize, uh, there's a development grant which is uh, competitive for transition costs. And anybody that, that um, uh, regionalizes is, can uh, apply for that competitive grant. And what does that cover? How much is it like each year? Do you know? Uh, the, the competitive grant for the development, um, if applied for and won by uh, the host community, which would be Wilbraham, um, that would cover uh, costs of 100% for the assessment for three years, 50% uh, for the fourth year, and 25% for the fifth year paid to the host community. Uh, it would also cover transition costs uh, for transitioning over from a single PSAP to a regional or two member PSAP. Um, and those costs, those uh, grants are again there um, awarded um, by, by town. Um, it's a uh, the development grant. Hang on one second, let me just pull it up in my paperwork here. It's a competitive grant, so several regional centers can apply for it at the same time. Okay. I don't have exact numbers here um, because it is competitive and the state doesn't know how many regional centers are going to actually apply for it. Does, does, is this based on new information or because it seems inconsistent with what you said the other night or the other morning? Um, I, I don't remember. What did we talk about uh, the grants? I, I believe I, I said that the grants are, are paid for or given to the host community or granted to the host community. Um, the community that's, that's leaving the PSAP does not get any grant money at all. Right. So we would not get the grant money. It'd be Wolverham would get the grant. Correct. The town of uh, Hamden would receive no more grant money from State 911. Everything would go to the host community, whoever the host community is. Why then did the uh, uh, That's and I, I think uh, chair of the board say that we had to come up with an additional fee? And when I talked with him today, he said he wanted to, the town would want a share of the savings uh, in. Uh, Hamden. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I didn't hear that at all. I'm sorry. Uh, I, well, I think there's some kind of disagreement. Maybe we, we could uh, work this out uh, at another uh, Zoom conference uh, this week because I did get a, get a different message today when I talked with the E911 office. So, while okay. I try to test something up uh, so we can clarify this. Because I think it's really important. It's really oh, absolutely. Important. Yeah, and I, I do have emails from uh, State 911 that I, I ask questions about uh, who gets paid what and how it works. And I do have that email uh, that I can refer to if you have any, any more questions of me right now. Right now. No. Okay. Yeah, we'll set up another conference. Maybe I can bring state office. 
into it. I, I think we need to hear from the okay. horses now. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank I'll you. I'll set something up with you and with uh, the town administrator uh, later on this week, and maybe the E911 office, so we can clarify this. Because I want to come back to the to the Hamden board with um, you know, the best information available. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now, what is our goal? Is our goal to be we have this decision made by the November town meeting? Is that what we committed to? We doing committed to bringing the we information bring forward to the and November when is town meeting. November town meeting. Do you have a November. <laughs> Typically, the uh, fall town meeting is the end of October. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first of. Typically, yeah. And when do the, who when do they set it? We set it. We set it. We set it after we have a conversation with the accountant, and we're going to be close to ready to set the tax rate. Yeah. You know, okay. And and would that be delayed because of COVID at all, or because the first? I think you're going to be concerned delayed about the bit. second yeah. wave thing. And that's yeah. certainly yeah. going to be consideration. Yeah. We're yeah. going to be doing some financial decisions at this meeting. The meeting has to be done before we set, the tax, to set rate. the tax rate. That's the right. key part right there. That's okay. the big thing, and you have to do something free cash. So, you know, <laughs> I need to fix the thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's an important thing because you have to, yeah. you can't just set it all against the tax rate yeah. or whatever. Uh, we did make some commitments to funding mm -hmm. things out of free cash, such as a cruiser, et cetera, tree work, things like that. We do have a shortfall. We, we made a commitment to look at those things. Yeah, we, we, made made a, uh, we have a shortfall yeah. in paving as well. We talked about addressing yeah. if possible. And we certainly heard from Mark tonight there may be a need for some of that. Conversely, do we really want to, well, we have to be cognizant, going back to the health um, of a potential second wave and exposure again. When we are talking fun, some financial matters, the potential is much better for a larger crowd attending town meeting. And that's gonna be the two things we have to balance against each other. The fact that we have these orange articles that must be addressed versus you know, risk to health. Risk to health. Right. Right. It may be that the board might say we might have to go outdoors and we should move the town meeting up into September when it's still possible to have an outdoor meeting. And that's, I think, just something really has to be on the Almost agenda, on, the, on yeah. our radar going forward. Yeah, and September isn't so far away. September is a month and a half away. Point. Yeah. And now you get into a posting of town warrant, publishing the town warrant, yeah. your time, things like that. So there should be an agenda item going forward. Okay. I, I, I did circulate to everybody um, a dispatch service study proposal mm -hmm. of how the dispatch should be studied um, because I think that uh, um, it, it's important to uh, look at things thoroughly and in an organized kind of fashion. Um, and I thought that the people that should be looking at it should be experts in the fields that we are looking at. So we should have somebody for legal, we should have somebody for finance, we should have somebody to do the calling around to the towns and whatever, and they all work independently and they come back and report to the board, and then the, the, the decision stays in the hands of the board. You can look at, I gave you some timeline on the back of it. You can look at all of it, accept it, not accept it, uh, whatever. But I think it's important that we, um, rather than just have scattered conversations about it, we bring some closure to it and we bring some organized critical thinking skills to it. The reason I said to use individual um, uh, experts as opposed to a committee I gave you I give you the rationale behind it. And there there are lots of reasons. Are we gonna use. pay them? Huh? Are we gonna no. pay these experts? No. no. <laughs> but I have four people that can do it right now off the top of my head. Okay. I mean they're experts in dispatch or the experts in, in the I, I don't know. Categories, basically. In, they're categories, in yeah. categories. Um, no, what what would be a category? Well, I would take the questions that you gave and I would group them. Okay, I would say these are all questions that would apply to that a, that a legal expert could answer. These are all questions that a financial expert could answer. These are all questions that a personnel person could answer and see how they group. And then you would get people in those categories that group. Okay, so that you don't need a, you know, you maybe don't need a dispatch person. It would depend on, you know, you, you need a personnel person because you want somebody that will, will deal with, you know, how do you, what do you do with people that lose their jobs? And we, all those kinds of questions would be, to me, would be personnel questions. Okay, so you could get a personnel, like, like Carol Fitzgerald might be somebody or somebody, I don't know, you know, just, so you, you'd have to say, you, and, and part of it I think would be to ask for questions from the community so that they have input, okay? And they can say, these are the questions I would like posed 
and then we would print a document that would go home to them or mm -hmm. could be placed posted on the website however we want to do it however financially we could do it so that everybody has the same information we're not operating on emotion we're operating on facts mm -hmm. and we're not operating um in a scattered way so that i have some information and you have some other information and that doesn't well you two went to the meeting yeah so you both have the same information no you would think so wouldn't you I, I don't think I mean, you do. three went to the meeting. The three, we, we have similar information. I, I don't think John had the same information, but he no, talked but to the guy later. So he has more information from another conversation, perhaps, that I didn't have exposure to. I understand that, but then the guy gets on and so says, This is what I shared at the meeting and didn't hear. Now, I like your idea about the, the dispatch group, but I still think there needs to be public involvement as well. Well, public in terms of like, you know, okay, this doesn't fit into a category. Your, dame, your fear, and I understand it completely, is that you don't want a committee made up of, to be honest, five well-meaning citizens, but perhaps no expertise in the topic you're trying to address. So I see the compromise there is saying, okay, without getting too unwieldy, we don't want an 11-person committee. This is a building the Taj Mahal. You want a seven-person committee, perhaps, with five directed personnel things and maybe two at large. But when you they can bring their input but they're not going to override the experts, so to speak. Right, but when you have it smaller, mm. okay, with just, you know, five different areas, four different areas, mm. you give them an absolute assignment. This is your assignment. We're not going to meet as a committee. You're going to go and research these topics for us and bring us back data that mm. shows us why. You've done research on the internet, you've talked to Westcom, you've talked to, if you were the person doing personnel, you've, you've done all the personnel things from your background, and then you come in with your but, piece of information. But that's not a committee. Then no, Bob, exactly. Then it's Bob hiring four people to go out and get them information. Exactly, it's not a committee. That's exactly right. And I don't think that's what we want. A couple of chat questions are up. That's, that's, uh, you know, but there's two things. Don had asked me to come up with an estimate for costs. Well, first, for first of all, we agreed at a meeting that we were all going to send questions that we would have to you yeah, okay. about that. So you asked, yeah, you asked me to, yeah. ask, to estimate to costs for unemployment. Right. I did make a call. I said to. Uh, Westcom also to ask what the job market was like. And I was told that the job market for dispatchers is fairly strong. This is the problem. It's hard to estimate what your unemployment costs are going to be. Unless you know I'm here. You have to know how long it's going to take, let's say, a, a dispatcher here who no longer works here to find other work. So. It's a tough one, although there is a market there that uh, I was told is, is fairly strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, Westcom offers only an interview. They will not make a commitment uh, to hire. And Wilbraham said the same thing, that they would, they they would interview they people. They will do the same thing. They said the same thing. Mm -hmm. They'll interview. But they and the second they thing is, this is not a decision for town meeting. This no, is a decision for the Board of Selectmen under the law, mm -hmm. so legal. Mm -hmm. uh, although, clearly, Although I think we did uh, have a public meeting and uh, dug up a lot of information. There were a number, of, we had 51 people yeah. that night. And so there were people who needed information and were not convinced that this was the right decision for the uh, town. And I think uh, whatever you're going to do, we got to bring some people along uh, and show them the information that you would have to base a decision. I don't that. See, I, I, I think there's only, I, I think there's only three questions. The three questions are, is the state going to have, the, the, is, whether we go to Wilbraham or to Westcom or to Billy Bob, uh, do, is it the same deal? Yes. Right, because we, yeah, we have to know what the best, so that's the financial we have to know what the best deal is. The second question is, uh, what is going to be the cost of us to discontinue dispatch service? And to me, the cost of us is the unemployment for if people are going to lose their jobs, what the unemployment would be. And uh, what would be, what's is going to happen to the police station? Do we want a dark police station? If not, what is the plan to have someone there and how much that would cost? Those are the three questions. And then there's infrastructure costs. And infrastructure costs. What, what happens to our equipment? Right, right. Yeah, for the connection. But it seems like the answer to those questions is going to be, like you say, you leave town, those are going to be the same cost no matter what. Yeah. Right. Now you're into, to be honest, and we talked before, is it a 
qualitative thing or a quantitative thing? Is this just a, a comfort level for the town, i.e. going to Chicopee or going to Wolverham right. or going to Ludlow, you investigated them as well. What will provide good service to the town and what is gonna make the town people feel they're getting the value for that money? Because we're still gonna be paying money. Right. You know? If we put a person manning the window at the police station, do you still getting value? These are the people of town. I think that they do need a voice on the committee. Having the experts is good, but I still think there's a committee to be had here. This is not just. The problem I have with committees is that it goes round and round. Okay, whereas when you have a fact finder, there's a fact. I mean, what did the state say? Here is the proposal. They gave this to me. Here it is. Can, you want to read it? You want to read it? Yeah. We've got the proposal. When we talk about it, we go from from retirement or unemployment to what are my three questions to, and this is how committees work all the time. Yeah. To to whatever I can't even remember what you just brought up about. Um, it's gone out of my head. Okay. So so all of us go off on a different thing, and we really don't intellectualize the discussion. We really it still says it's disjointed, and it, it to me it doesn't. It's not linear. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't have any problem with having people on it, per, per se. I mean, if they have a task to do. Mm -hmm. This is your task. Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to do. You're going to be responsible to look into personnel, look into retirement, look into who's going to leave, look into so, all these kinds of personnel well, issues. Then how is that not, I don't see how that doesn't dovetail with the thing you sent out there, with the agenda, here's a timeline, mm -hmm. et cetera. No, see, I was I done, mean, it, what, I'm that thing is, this committee perception doesn't dovetail with the, the you know, proposal you had there. It's still, the same thing. You form this group here. Don, see, I, don't see I, Don, I want you to reach out to the state. Mary Ellen, I want you to reach out to unemployment. We're going to report back on our next committee meeting next week and we have these answers. How is that different? I think it's more productive when you have a, a, a group of experts as opposed to a committee. When, a commi when you have a committee, the, um, their purpose evolves. They think they have a mandate, which they don't. They uh, are easily distracted by various points of view. They get off on this tangent or that tangent. I mean, the Capital Improvement Committee, how productive are they really right now? Mm -hmm. and, and since I've ever watched them, okay? And I think it's, and my, from my experience has been, because I work with groups a lot, mm -hmm. my experience has been that they're more productive when they are fact finders, when they are experts in something, when they're going to bring something to the table that makes them an expert. So they come to us and they say, this is my expertise, Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm going to tell you, as opposed to us discussing it and then sort of feeling like we have the right answer. I but don't, we don't have to beat it to death. But the, I, this is just what I, what I had for you guys so that you would look at it from a different point of view, um, because I think it makes for, for more productive, it makes for more, more productive results in my mind. Mm -hmm. But that could be who I am. And they're going to do this for free. Of course they are. It's not going to take a long <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to take them long. You would do it if I came to you. Uh, if I go to your daughter and say, would she be the lawyer? She might be the lawyer. Yeah, but this, you, you know see, what I mean? I, thought, it, I think you're conflating expert with people with an in, a interest in that part of it. You're not going off for experts per se. You're saying, we're going to put people, better town people that have some like getting Jay O'Brien to handle the financial Jay O'Brien to handle the accounting, for example, you know, the financial thing. Like you said, Carol with the personnel thing, that's fine. Right. But they're still volunteers. They're still, they're still forming a committee to come back and report to, whether it's Bob, whether it's Susan. Well, I, I, I don't want to get hung up on, on the word committee. If you, if you want to call it a committee, you can call it a committee. I just think that it, it should be fact-based, not emotionally based. And it well, should be, I, let me, it should be, I, I want to ask you about the emotional base. What, what, what is that? I think the emotional base is when, when, when I can lay out five facts for you when you make a decision over here. And I can give you five facts. Five absolute clear cut facts. And yet you'll vote over here. So or if you the, make pers a so if the person here. doesn't vote the way you want, no, if, on if the facts, fact, if it's a fact, the facts, it's emotional. A, fa a fact is a fact. I know, but, but if, they, if the person says, you know, I see all your facts, but you know what? I feel like I'm going to do this. I feel like I'm going to do that. That's their emotion. I feel like this is the right decision. They and they shouldn't the vote and they shouldn't make the no, right decision? No, they can make that, but I don't think it's as meaningful a decision as if they make it on a fact. What's that quote about statistics? Is statistics, statistics, and damn statistics, or whatever? All right, so let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me let me ask you this question. Let me. So, so let me ask you this question. 
you come in with your, your fact finder comes in and he says, it's going to cost you $250,000. If you lay everybody off, your unemployment for the next five years is going to be $200,000, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll still save $300,000. That's a fact, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, you know what? I don't want to spend two hundred thousand dollars on unemployment. Right. right. That's an emotion. No. Or it's just. That's an assessment of the facts, because she gave you the two facts. If you said, I don't know how much we're going to save, but whatever it is, it's going to be. Yeah, fine. but you just told me that the people president can give you facts, and if you vote this other way, you're voting against the facts. Well, you are voting against the facts, but you're but you're weighing. But it's not facts. emotional. It's just it's saying, just like I don't think two hundred thousand dollars is a good way for the town to spend money. Because it's only a hundred thousand dollar difference, so it's better to keep the people on. Okay, and what is that? Is That's that an based emotion? On, no, it's based on the facts. The facts are that the, the, this is is a cost benefit analysis, and to me, the cost benefit doesn't fit the criteria. If I just voted on Christ, if I just voted on everything that I thought was going to save us money, <laughs> we wouldn't be running the town. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Not everything can save you money. No. Well, by the way, we one, of, one of the solutions out. I was thinking, you know, how can we come up with some kind of reasonable estimate when the administrators come back, East Longmeadow, East Longmeadow, and I'm going to call Evan back in a month and ask him what their experience was with unemployment. Well, what you have to do on unemployment, you have to say, we have X number of people, and if they're laid off on this date and mm -hmm. they get the maximum, that, that would be right. our maximum right. liability. Right. That would be our maximum right. liability. Right. Right. Anything below that would be. And of course, it's very hard to do unemployment now because of all the changes in, in right. federal yeah, unemployment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my conversation with Tony, you did mention possible. that the dispatch market, honestly, is pretty high. And that they are high yeah, well, it's, yeah I see that so all the time. I think you're right. Look at the max, but the reality might be a lot less well, exposure. Was. You can't, but you can't count on it. No. That's right. right. You have to look at worst case. All right. So I we think have, we have a direction. Do, I think we you do, provide we us do. with a direction here. <laughs> And I think you, you've done a good job of summarizing where we need to go. I just think, and I don't want to put a label on it. I fear yeah, that that's what you say. I don't want to get this label thing that I might skew our direction. I think that's what happened with, with the word committee, mm -hmm. that you have a label. But that's I have to say, I've heard of the committee. I thought that the, the fire chief study committee mm -hmm. was excellent. Mm -hmm. Because we gave them a mission, we wrote them a mission right. statement. Exactly. And they had some people with expertise. They had some people with expertise, right? And they and they, 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 right. and they, and they came out with a nice report. They came with a nice report that right. we could make a decision with. Right. Okay, moving right along. Okay, moving right along. I think that ship sailed. Okay. So, so what you have to, what, what, we, uh, what we have to decide is if this is kind of a timeline. Mm -hmm. If you want to modify the timeline, you can okay. redo the whole but thing. But in the meantime, you're going to have this thing. meeting, try to set up this meeting this week to get more information, yeah. to at least clarify to that, that part. To get, to get some facts. Bring more information yeah. to you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, like it's, like, if there is no reimbursement, you're right. There's no incentive. That's right, part. right. I will say on a personal thing, if they're talking, look, we're looking for a little something, something from Hamden, in return for us doing the thing we think you should. If you're going to save $100,000, you need to cut us 20000 to cover our overhead. Is it the most unreasonable thing I've ever heard of? No. no. Is it the number? The number is what you negotiate. No, I don't and what is that based on? What is that based on? Just you want a little cut of it? Or the fact that our expenses are going up, so you should help cover some of those expenses? Well, I think we're going to be hiring a dispatcher, I, I, I think, therefore you need to help us with our unemployment. I think the other part of that whole discussion, however, has to be where is the town of Hampton going? Mm -hmm. Do we want to become part of Wilbraham? Because we will have nursing, we will have, um, we will have dispatch, we will have the regional schools, we will have, so is that the road we want to go down? Because you could, you could do all, we, we looked at, what did we look at? We looked health at, agent. right, the health agent, mm -hmm. we look, so you can, you can go way down that road. And I think that should be a town discussion of where does the town want to go? Do you, do you want to do that? Well, we already have regional things anyhow with veterans agents, things like that. Yeah, we do. Consolidation exactly. of resources and saving money by doing things efficiently isn't necessarily a bad thing. You're right, look at it in the totality. In the totality. Look, the other thing could the solution be, we're not going to do anything with dispatch. Okay, we pay this much extra money, the town is good with leaving it and doing that because they like that comfort thing. That could be the decision of the board. It might not be the most financially sound decision, 
but it might be the decision this board presents. It could be you have three options, merge with another town, merge with Westcom, and don't make any change. And it's up to us to look at the facts and look at them in the whole context as well. Okay. But your other point is right. Let's not drag it on forever. You know, we don't okay. want to wait until our kids are sitting here and they're making a decision. Okay, mini mall building inspector, really mall. Nothing okay. new, we checked in, we checked mm -hmm. with our building inspector. Yeah. Uh, you know, the mall has, mm -hmm. it's been sold. Yeah. And the new owner is cooperating yeah. and uh, setting up a, a session with the planning board. Yeah. But the big, the, the big news is, is that they've replaced the septic system and has been a problem for yes. many years. And right. gotten now, done. And gotten done. And gotten Someone, done because we asked for those letters. Right. I, was I, at the, <laughs> I was at the uh, planning board meeting when uh, CJ came in. He didn't have really enough definition to meet with them. You know, he had yeah. some sketches, but not the full plans they're looking for. There are some plans going forward for additional parking, perhaps some change in businesses, which will be a decision of the planning board. Yeah. As you know, whenever the the mini mall has had changes, they've always looked at the parking as an issue. There's a the timeline. Okay, this business is open during the day, this one at night, so they can really count on the same spaces. But all of a sudden, if they're going to go ahead and close these daytime businesses and replace them at nighttime, you've been there. Yeah. There's not an extra yeah. parking place. Yeah. Well, I think that what he was talking about doing was uh, making the septic area That's what I said. to be to yeah, be so for said, parking no park for employee there. parking, right. and then the parking down here would give more parking to the, to Possibly, the customers. But, again, but not that much, I didn't think, because it, I mean, how many employees do you have? At the uh, mini mall? Huh? At the mini mall? Yeah, a lot. Oh, that's probably like mm. 60 or 70. Mm. Yeah. 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 60 cars would go up yeah. at the top. Sure, you got the, I mean, look at the yeah. wait staff at the La yeah. things like that. Mm. Mm. Well, I think he's trying to do a good job. Four or five people standing it's my impression. I think he's night. painting it up and he's trying to make it nice and I asked good if, for him. If he was successful in getting DEP to roll back the capacity that they were mm. initially requiring. I don't have an answer for that yet. I think that was what Gary was talking about right. when he came in to right. see us, that he felt with the new low flow things they put in, yeah. that they're going to apply for a way to recalculate the thing. I don't know, but they put four huge, huge things. <laughs> I said to myself, holy schmoly. Yeah. I knew they said you were full of something, but yeah. I didn't know it was that much. All right, clear gov update. Uh, we're making progress. Uh, they need uh, some uh, information from the accountant. And there's some difficulty in providing that information because there's the old accounting system and the new one. They wanted four years. Mm. He can give them two under Vadar, and the other two <laughs> that they want are not available, but he can give them that information in an Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So we have all that worked out, and as far as I know, as of today, we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. If you want to see what this is going to be like, you showed us. Did check, you the Wilbur, check the Munson, Munson, I Munson it. website. Yes. Uh, they have it right on the front page. And, uh, it's very cool. It's very right. nice. Yeah, yeah. And very easy to use. That's where we'll yeah. do the same. Yeah. All right. That, we, do, is that the is that the template they give us the whole thing and we just use it like that or do we did they is that part of their We would have design? to ask. Uh, we would have to ask the uh, website company to do something. Yeah, because I thought it could on, be a little you know, played down, but but I mean but they, it was they very good. Post, they very good. on the website. Yep. Good. Yeah, so. Good. Uh, vehicle use policy. I need some more time. For okay, okay. What are you doing with that? Uh, well, what, what is that? Don't we uh, have a vehicle use policy? We have it only for the uh, animal control officer. Mm -hmm. No, we have it for everybody, don't we? I, I, mean, I don't know what you're looking for, but I know we have a vehicle use policy, and it says the animals are only one little piece of it. I mean, this, this happens because of the... It's in, it's in everyone's contract, for instance. It's in the police chief's yeah. contract. It's in, yeah, it's in the individual the, contracts. Right, right. I don't believe there's one in the town handbook. So, I looked in the town and see. No, this is this is I don't know. This is what we have in here. I don't know if that helps you, doesn't help you, if I should delete that. Not this is what, what you mean. It's in the it's proposed, in the policy, in our the policy, policy, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's Bob oh, yeah, saying okay, there's no yeah. there's no existing policy is what he's saying. Right? Yeah. It, this is a proposed oh. policy. 
Yeah, but you, you wouldn't have to recreate the wheel if that was and sufficient. I, but if it's not okay. sufficient, then I'll put your whole okay. thing well, in I there or whatever. I forwarded, I forwarded the one. I thought this was on the agenda. Next I forwarded week. the one to you from, uh, you know, it was like a four page. Yeah, I, I, the, yeah. the Wilbraham policy is like five pages. Yes. 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 Very, very comprehensive. Overkill. But uh, again, same thing. You don't want to get into conflict. We have a signed contract with the police chief. We have yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 yeah, so this may not be sufficient for your purposes. In general, our bylaws, as well as this manual, um, exempts contracts with unions and contracts mm -hmm. with individuals. So okay. Okay. they're they're outside these mm -hmm. regulations. It may be a bit of overkill. How many town vehicles are we actually talking about here? Mm -hmm. Two or three. <laughs> Four. I don't know. One. Yeah. You got one. police, you got fire. We, the, they're they're they not call. covered. I mean, they're again, yeah, contract, um, yeah. right, contract. Oh, they're not under right. contract. So basically, you have the Animal. fire department that drives, you have the one for Shelly, and that's it. The rest aren't town. We have no other. Yeah, this vehicles. may be enough. Right. This, this came up, by the way, when I Again, contract. No, I mentioned it. No. Highway contract as well. Yeah. Well, you can check it out. Because <laughs> I see you keep coming yeah, out. Every time I see it, I'm just like saying, Michael, we doing something? Because I don't remember this at all. All right. Uh, all right. So you're going to work on that. Yeah. Enhancing efficiency. Well, part of that is the dispatch study that I gave you. But but, but also part of it is... is um, <laughs> um, you know, part of it is um, setting specific goals and reaching those goals. I think this, this policy manual has taken me far too long. If you had told me get this done by January 1st, I would have had it done by January 1st. Because I need a date. You have to tell me you want to buy that or I put it off. I, I mean, I really do. I, you have to have I, clear expectations and bring things to closure is all I really wanted to say. But okay. and this, and so after I had done this, I, I did the dispatch thing to give you an idea of where I come from on all this. All right. Uh, so you okay. have a very impressive word processor. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, special town meeting articles. Yeah, so, so, John, so, uh, sorry, so basically we have a, a list of the ones we passed over from annual town meeting. Obviously, we have the concern about what we can do for a fall town meeting. You know, so the reports on mass yeah. live, and then yeah. they have about second wave. Possibly even heard that might be even stepping back one phase in Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, that's on the table right yeah. now. Yeah. So, but we do have articles we need to address. So I think it'd be good if we Bob starts developing the draft special town meeting okay. right now, because if we have to pull the trigger quickly now, yeah. as we talked about, we need to have something quick to go. Okay. Really work with Eva and advisory because those dates are different than the annual town meeting dates. Things like that. Yeah. There were four articles. I have I have the list. Yeah, of Four articles from the <clears throat> annual town meeting that were not acted upon. Mm -hmm. uh, preservation. Uh, unpaid bills, obviously didn't have any. And then the last two articles, transfers to stabilization and how much is going to be transferred to reduce the tax rate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Those are the only four articles that were not acted upon at the annual town meeting. And I have I have yeah, but, we, but, we, 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 but we, we put off road. We also passed, uh, no, there were at least Three or four conservation. Yeah. We didn't I'm sorry, conservation. Yeah, conservation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then we, we talked about adding yeah, a potential yeah. looking at the uh, cruiser, cruiser, looking at paving, looking at trees. trees. You know, okay. Yeah. You know, same thing. But those, the, but standard, the standard, I hate to say it, boilerplate special town meeting. Aren't yeah. They really yeah. Are. Um, and he wants to have, we should have something at the pilot for Borrego if they want to go forward with that. We need authority for, for authority uh, to negotiate, negotiate and that. That would be good, actually. Let's go back to. The assessors, how many projects are there? Because if there's another one that we aren't, I don't want to thresh a road. Do we have yeah. put it on there and let's get that on there now because they don't expire, right? So, yeah. and again, I, I understand your point. We didn't make a commitment, but we did make a commitment to look at them again, so at least we should put them in the draft, right? Okay, your point is that it may be no action, right? But make sure it's on the draft at least. So but, we know. But, but again, I, I guess my thing is that I think. Um, what I've noticed in the past in coming to in coming to selectman meetings is that there is a tendency sometimes to defer something from the from the spring town meeting to the fall town meeting rather than just say no. I can't recall any police cases. is always police is always never. cruiser all never, the time. Never, police cruiser. Never, police cruiser has never been deferred until this last town meeting. Oh, I thought I thought no. deferred. No, we've done a second cruiser. A second cruiser. Right. That's, that's what never, I mean. That's not deferred. Oh, well, I there's always been a cruiser in the budget. 
Yes, I realize that, okay. but I thought he would ask for two cruises and then then one would be to purchase at all. No, it, no, because that was, you know one was given now, one was given later. Yeah, no, the second one was never asked in budget because that would spike the budget. So that's why the second one is all paid out of free cash. Well, whatever. It doesn't. I'll, I'll look at it. Look. I mean, I'll just pay attention to. It. I mean, I'm just. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> oh, it may look like that, but it may be. Yeah. It's like a like maybe third year. Maybe third year, I think. Yeah. And it's gotten better. And I think you made the point before that these cars run longer. longer. So it used to be you got that second car regularly every other year. And now hopefully it's every third year because you're getting better. Better mileage and better. And taking and better cars are better. And cars are better. And better. Cars are better. Warranty, the, whole bit. the whole thing is better. Okay. Yeah, the chief has also underscored that the, the, the new models that have come out last longer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Good. Oh, town administrator report. <laughs> okay. Um, we are, uh, I think, doing well with the reopening. Uh, we have the, must be the receptionist. The receptionist up there doing a very good job. <laughs> it seems to be working. The contacts department heads, they go up there and they deal with whatever issue uh, residents have. Is there much business? Yes. She told me when I uh, did the hire that she could not, uh, there was one day that she couldn't work, and that was last Tuesday. So I went up there <laughs> and uh, I sat there and uh, there was plenty of this. A lot of it's taxes. People come to the yeah, tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But building departments, uh, stuff and stuff for the clerk. So, um, no, it's, uh, <clears throat> I think it's working very well. Um, let's see, um, and you know that the treasurer has relocated the office down to where the- what, What's the planning board bond? Um, I think we, you know, that was something I just put down there and I didn't go any further. Oh, okay. We've already dealt with that with the uh, Ames. Oh, I'll just see. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> uh, well, the, we've relocated the offices. Uh, we're looking for one new computer for the assistant treasurer. We've got a cubicle over there where the uh, copier is. We should have that because we had two or three more in the budget. Yes. So right. yeah. okay. we're just waiting for them to arrive. I've, I've ordered them. Okay. Uh, met with the Conservation Commission Chair. This is an intractable problem. Um, and uh, incidentally, I did talk with um, the uh, administrator in, uh, in, in Munson today. Mm -hmm. They're in the same situation. So I said, yeah, let's talk about. Uh, both of us uh, go into the market for someone that we can share. There's nobody from the local schools or colleges. That That's what I said. That. I told that to Ted I said, I can't imagine that you can't find somebody. No that one. That would, uh, you saw the, the applicant yep. that answered, yeah. that answered yeah. the uh, yeah. I mean, uh, even somebody new from Stockbridge or something. Like that some ecology major, like, yeah, some yeah, anything. Uh, right. uh, and they're not in school anyway. I, so I, I was here. ready, am ready, I guess, to mm -hmm. hire somebody and do the training. Um, Unless we can work something Bob out. Gets the extra hours. I thought he was going to say, I can't write. Unless we can work something out with uh, Munson. All right, just to share that uh, Tim Hanley stepped down from, he was the alternate, at, uh, yeah. but he's moving out of town. Oh, so it's kind of well, good for him. And we're also going to move before we the scheduling meeting with the planning board. Mm -hmm. uh, you do this, you have the CR from yeah. Westbrook. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk design project. Uh, Ty and Bond uh, wants to actually walk the site. I did send you a message on that. You had a second hand station. No, no, we're, we're good on that. Uh, I think that's at one o'clock in the afternoon. So what time are we walking the street? I think that's at one o'clock in the afternoon. I have to, I'll clarify that for you. Is, is it less than 100 on Wednesday or? Uh, we have uh, 89, so pretty close. Uh, well, I'll just have to ask for a password of the city. Uh, it says here that Eastbrook is Eastbrook is available to answer any questions. They're here. I got we going to ask about the we wanted to ask about the uh, voltage or the what is it the, the fees for the yeah but that's just for the assessor in the building. I, I don't want to okay. you know, pass it on to the appropriate department. Okay. You know, we're going to be asking. They want to know who to answer. And then you got too many people asking. Right. So this meeting with time bond is at one o'clock. Right. Need a signature. Okay. Um, Where are we in the 
thought we were going to say the ham. I like this idea. I thought we were going to say the ham to the house. <laughs> well, I'm just stopping for ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> Uh, we did get the, the message from the DOT uh, that uh, they're, they like our application, but uh, they need more information. Uh, we did supply the additional information. I got a message uh, from the consultant saying that they don't think that the DOT likes rebuilding uh, sidewalks, so that this might not be favorably received. Okay. But nevertheless, it's in. Okay. And lastly, uh, we did get funded under the Municipal Vulnerability Project that we submitted, uh, funded for $40,000. Uh, hire a consultant to do a plan for the town's vulnerabilities to severe weather, mostly flooding. So, uh, and uh, new business selectment priorities, as you know, are posted uh, on, uh, on the OneDrive under focus. I still cannot open those um, attachments that you put on my reduce on this. Oh, can I, you open I yours? Them, when I put them, mm -hmm. I open, I, I Where are deliberately try. I don't know what they are, but they have all these, like, these things here. Mm -hmm. the, P, the PDF side? Yeah. Well, I, my guess is that you don't have the PDF reader, maybe? No, I have PDF. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. Yeah. It worked for me. Did it not work for no, you? No. No didn't work for you either? No. no. If I click on that, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't do anything. I say that's okay because I already had a resume. It didn't make a difference, but I don't get them. I don't understand this. <laughs> but there's a scanned image PDF. I don't know. How, about, how about the Word file? I didn't word check file. the Word because I, I, oh, I just I said, oh, I can't get these. Forget them. I, I, have, I do have a question for Eastbrook. We wanted to ask about the, what, what uh, uh, Wilbraham's. We want to see if there's equivalent, 14,000. Yes. Right. Well, 14,000 for us, it would, is that going to be, what is their, what is their percentage? Could you open it up and ask them that? There. Hi, everyone. Matt Parlance here from BWC uh -huh. Eastbrook. Matt, what, what was, Wil, what's Wilbraham's pilot? What are you paying them? I believe Wilbraham's pilot is um, it's still under negotiation just because uh, we actually haven't had the chance to take that to okay. town meeting there yet, whereas we have yeah. in this case. Um, but it is expected to be in the about 16,000 per megawatt AC range just because uh, their parcel includes the, um, the access road and the, uh, the any frontage disturbance. Um, so, so the so for us, you have if the estimate is fourteen thousand four hundred dollars a year. What would their estimate payment be? Uh, so I believe that they have uh, three point. So this is a, a rough estimate of three point one megawatts at sixteen thousand. Okay, so they're they're getting sixteen per megawatt because they have the access road, and we're getting fifteen because we're just. We don't have the road. Yeah, and then there's also just the mill rate to take into account um, that, that how the calculation was done on the income approach. We thought that that was um, all right. All right, that's, what, that's all you need. That's what I wanted to know. Yep, but but their yeah, value. What do you guys? Do what do you, how you? How's your construction going there? Uh, it's going really well. There was, um, you know, that that parcel was torn up by a tornado in 2011, but we've been able mm -hmm. to uh, stabilize the site and hopefully it's some pretty big improvements. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, as a follow-up, would you like to um, to see our Wilbraham proposal, or or have any conversation around the calculation? I'm sorry. I didn't hear that again. Just um, curious about the desired next step of the board. Um, we're happy to walk through any steps of the calculation or whatever the board would like to see. Okay. Well, we're. Well, we're pretty good right now, so we'll say we'll yeah. we're, we're going to wait for Wilbraham to get their piece done, I think, right. and then we'll be all set. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. 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 Was we got the authority of town meeting already, so, so we don't have Brago. I think we have Thresher. Yeah. Seventy-five. Solar yeah. Project. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are cleaning the ductwork at uh, the town hall um, so that uh, those who work on the second floor mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, will not be affected by anything that's in the duck court. I see we have a question as to uh, what happened, what has happened to the uh, proposal that I put in for tree cutting money that was put in through Senator Lesser's staff. And that's still uh, tied tied into the budget process in Boston. And who knows? Who knows? This is the budget with a three billion dollar shortfall. That's right. Yeah. So I'm not optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Curious. Uh, concludes the report. Okay. And we have this report from Mitchell Associates. Yes. Just, just came in. Okay. Yes. How much did that cost, by the way? Do you know? Just off the top of your head, just uh, roughly. I don't know. <laughs> okay. No. I'm just curious. I thought it was 40. Right. Oh, no. All right. Okay. Anything else to come before the board? No, I do recommend. Uh, I think we only have a month ago. I would recommend to the board that we stay with the monthly meeting. I mean, the, the, the weekly summer meeting. Schedule is yeah, much, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The meeting. Yeah. Yeah, summer schedule is pretty out there. Window. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye.